All right. And we're live. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Morning thoughts. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Miss Goldie Robinson, thank you for being the first one in this morning. Shout out to Sean Cassell for being right there. Shout out to D Mac for being right there. Shout out to the people going out to work this morning. Shout out to the people coming in from work this morning. Extra, special, big up. Shout out to the people who work multiple jobs. I have the utmost respect for you. Shout out to my entrepreneurs, my stay-at-home moms and pops, my retirees. Shout out to the drivers. Shout out to the Uber driver, Lyft driver, truck driver, taxi driver, food delivery drivers, round town, long distance truck drivers. Shout out to the crossing guards. Shout out to the engineers. Shout out to the school teachers. Shout out to law enforcement personnel. Shout out to medical field personnel. Shout out to whatever your job description is. Shout out to that. Whatever your career field is, shout out to you and that. Shout out to the heavy equipment operators. Shout out to every single clean-hearted, good-hearted person who wants good for others as much as you want good for yourself. You're a good person. You deserve some respect. Shout out to you. It's the freaking weekend, baby! <laughs> clap it up, clap it up, clap it up. You made it through another week, my friend. A lot to give thanks for. Somebody didn't make it. This is my one well, of my tripod them. Somebody didn't make it through this week. You made it, so you better give some thanks. It wasn't your week to go. It wasn't your week to RIP. It wasn't your week to Sayonara. So you give thanks, right? So you're here to see another beautiful weekend, and that's a lot to give thanks for, especially if you're up and healthy and feeling strong and all these things. Give thanks, right? Amen. Live through Erica TV. Big up yourself. Hey, let me shout out some people. We have a lot to talk about this morning. I wasn't here yesterday. I just had to take that yesterday off. I had to. I had. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Couldn't move. I couldn't move. Miss Goldie Robinson again. Big up. Thank you for being the first one in. Sean Cassell. Big up yourself. Please hit the like button as you enter the live. I appreciate everybody that does that and remembers to do that. It helps the video to trend on YouTube so that more people know that we're here and more people come over and join us, right? Great goodies is in the building this morning. Says up, up, up. And I'm wearing my up, up, up t-shirt this morning. You see that? Ah, shout out to DMAC. Big up yourself, DMAC. Thank you for being here. Andrea Shervis is here. Audrey Wright's in the building. Morning, fam, and present teacher. King Biggs is in the building. Says, morning, fam. Pussy Galore is in the building with us this morning. Sharon Spence is here. Kai Tai Jai Empress is in the building. Senior Sexy Elaine Brown. Audrey Wright says, please hit the like button as you enter. Thank you, Audrey. British Jamaican girl says it's Friday, thanks to the most high. Mitchell Taylor is in the building with us this morning. Life Through Erica TV is here this morning. Audrey Wright, Kim Byfield in the building. Big up yourself, Kim, and thank you for being here. Dorothy T is here, bright and early. Purple Royal is in the building. Mr. Article Don checking in from Tech. Mr. Article Don is always on the go. Today, he is in a place named Tegos. Tegucigalpa, Honduras. I hope I said that right. May I use my little um, phonics? You know, them used to teach us in school to break down the, the, the word into uh, letters and join the letters, syllables, and then you get the word Tegucigalpa, Honduras. Damn, boy, you move around. Jeez, what a man can travel, man. British Jamaican girl, big up yourself. Thank you for being here. Uh, Karen Notice is in the building with us. Rosalind Smichael is here with us this morning. Gunner Life, Virtuous Fire, Sis Afia, says Hotep, and Grand Rising Soflo and the family. Erica Dean is with us this morning as well. Wadi uh, and Jazzy Lady is also in the building. And Karen Mason, Erica Dean says, Miss you yesterday, Flo. Workflow, Mr. Arthur Caldon. Boy, you have an exciting career feel, bro. Because every time it, he was in the other place the other day where we, I didn't know that that place was not Mexico. It was a place of its own. So you're moving about, moving about. I like that. An exciting career field where you can travel and make a good living at the same time, right? Some engineering thing. Guatemala, right? Kaitai Jai Empress, Guatemala. 
um, I didn't know that I, I, I learned something new, right? Virtuous fire say it's the freaking weekend, baby. <laughs> Listen, we have a lot to talk about this morning, right? But yesterday, I just couldn't make it. And you know, I'm not gonna chat by myself already. So, what happened was. What? <laughs> Let me sip my tea because I was thinking about it this morning. And I was like, geez, you're going to have to leave that to the weekends now. I don't know why you're going to feel about this, but I think, you know, we're going to turn one a week kind of thing where we only get to um, do that once a week. Because between waking up, I go to bed late at night. I go to bed 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. But I'm up by 4 and 3 a.m., right? So if you go to bed at 11 and wake up at 3, you're not really getting no sleep. And if you do that seven days a week or six days a week, your body starts to run down after a while. So you have these periods where you crash out. I have these periods where I crash out for like a day or two. I just feel weak and out of myself. I don't know what this woman does. She does uh, and for the men them who have wives at home. You might be able to relate, but she knows what she's doing, even though she's going like she don't know what she adore. Maybe that's just herself, and I'm overly infatuated. But she does a walk around the house, a clean up and fix up the place, and you know, this like a red panty. A red panty. And the red panty, it's the way how it sits. It's like art. I'm telling you, it's like art. It's somebody who is a good artist drew this, put it together. Well, it was God. God is the designer of this. The way how the panty just lay down upon the brown skin and the body just brown and just in you know, the silky looking panty them. And it's barely, it's like the panty just a fight for space upon the body because the body nice and broad and round and thing. And the little panty is just right there like this. Not telling you too much, I'm just saying. It was bothering me like all day when she had do it. And every time she passed. I was, my mind does some make up things about, yo, you have to go deal with this later, look upon this. And every time she passed me, I tried not to look and I couldn't help myself. In my own house, I'm walking into the wall. I go around the corner, I go laugh after myself. I was like, yo, you're just walking on the wall, brother. You know, me walking on the wall now, boot up. Like, as if the wall hasn't always been there. So me, I watch the thing all day, you know, she in the kitchen, I clean up, she do some squat down. And I pick up something off of the floor, wipe up the floor. She do some bend over and wet up this one, wipe off this and clean long house. Couldn't help it. So I didn't make it to morning thoughts because, and I told y'all that these things happen quite frequently. So if you see me don't make it to morning thoughts, sometimes it has to do with that. Sometimes I still struggle coming here, come to morning thoughts anyways, even though, you know, me weak out. But, and design, the design of nature, eh? Men give, women take. We just lose a whole heap of energy. Them seem like them get energized off. I don't know. But anyhow, I mean, me week out, me week out, I was tired out. So I went, you know, like a late night thing and said, kids go to sleep. These kind of things, you know, daddy is up late. I'm waiting, I'm anticipating. Come here, I go do some like a sneaky thing. Uh, you know, I say, find her in the night there. I go in there to go find her. She knock out. We make date, you know. We made a date. We said, tonight. Yeah. Put the kids to sleep. Don't care how late it is. Tonight. So you have to put some effort into your thing, right? Right. So I'm up. I'm excited. I think she tired because she has sleep. She has work and clean and do all these things. Whole day, our schoolwork, this, that, and the other. So she tired out. I go in the room. I'm tipping in because they went to sleep in a different room. Coming up, I do some late night work, right? I went, I, I, I tip into the room now. Come here, text her, and she not answering. And this is like 15 minutes to midnight. Remember, I know, if we wake up 3 o'clock and 4 o'clock. 15 minutes to midnight, she not answering the phone. I said, she not answer my text. No, you can't leave me like this. My brain, I got all day. This have to come to fruition. We have to do this. So I tip to in the darkness, go over the next side of the house and thing. Open the room door slow. My daughter jump up. Not my wife. She in there. And I can't hear the snoring. You know, I, know, I, know, I know my daughter snore. Malani, she jump up. In the dark. So I had to stay there in the dark like a piece of furniture. See me? I catch up in a one corner. Because you know, she can't see in the dark. Because the room dark. I'm catch up like this. I some stealth operation. This I go on. You know, so I catch up in a corner like this in the darkness. And I'm there, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. And me now I move. 
and she had, we can feel like she looking around in the darkness, like, you know, she, you, she had make little sounds and stuff because she can't talk now. She said, mommy, mommy. I said, God, please don't make she see me because if she see me in there, it mash up for the night. This is, I'm in there till after 12. All right, me going the 15 minutes to midnight. All uh, five minutes after 12, me in a hand corner, catch up like this. This is work, you have to put in enough to get little enough. And I'm there like this in the corner. And she get up, take my daughter, carry go to the next room, and left me in there in the darkness, which was cool. And put her back to sleep in her next room, and then come back over there to the other room. So shout out to wife for all them effort there, because she didn't have to do it. She could have just laid down there and... <sighs> And, and, and just leave me there, which wouldn't have been okay with me, but me would have to deal with it. So thank her for that. Put the picnic them to sleep. Back again by that time, you know, already I like 12.30, 12.45, going on 1 o'clock and these things. 1 o'clock in the morning, in the rumblings, go on. You know how that part, they go already. And man just couldn't wake up. Couldn't wake up. The next thing my Adam opened, I saw it was 6.45, almost 7 o'clock. <laughs> I said, oh my God. I oh, can't keep doing this. So I get up real quick and just put up a little message that there will be no morning thoughts this morning. Please watch this Vibes Cartel um, update video. And that will be your morning thoughts for today. And I'll catch you tomorrow morning right here. You know why I'm going to start off with this story? I start off with this story because there's a video going around of a man trying to get some in the middle of the night from his wife, see? And her response is, I don't know. I see the response and I said to myself, you know, say if my wife ever do that, I don't think I could have lived with that. I don't think I could live with that. She responded like, oh my God! Like she just turn around and scare the man. You know when y'all be laying on the bed, you on your side, you turn your back, give away, you you got sleep, you're sleeping. You know, you know I don't know, like a sexy snore. Cause only no snore like we. I mean, well, I don't know any women that snore like man snore. Man snore like we are move house, right? They snore some like a... <sighs> Say, all right, she asleep. But when y'all be turning in the bed like that and, the, you know, the little accentuation of how the, the sheet just drop the right way and the little body peg just hang out there so and stuff, we start having ideas in the middle of the night because it's the middle of the night. It's when we get to relax. So when man relax and blood start flowing everywhere and then ideas start pumping in your head, you want to do a little something. So, you know, we used to, we like, slide in a little bit. Like, are you, you know, we slide in and slide in a little bit. And we are try to line up ourselves properly. Because we used to it now. We know right where it's at and how to position yourself in order to hit. So, we go in a little bit, son, and position ourselves. That's what brother was doing. And his wife turned around after the man get right there, ready to do him thing. She said, oh, my God. You couldn't do me that. You couldn't do me that. That was so distasteful. I don't know who else does this. But if you do and you're a woman, please stop it. Because, you know, I know a lot of you do it. Because I saw the comments on this video. And most of the women were like, you're damn right. You can't be waking me up from my sleep. Ain't nobody waking me up out of my sleep at, no, 3 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the morning to come get some. You have to wait till another time. No, no, so you go. Sometimes we can't wait till another time. Sometimes our body works on its own and we have to follow it. So it's good when you have a wifey that understands these things and she's like, it's all good. Come get some, right? And she wake up and facilitate. Not true? Like, <laughs> like to Erica TV says she must have been having a really good dream or a deep, deep sleep. She got Bex. Yeah. She pro uh, now that you said that, I wonder if she did a dream about her ex-man, our next man, and then you come interrupt, and you're not who I want to see. Oh, my God. It's like, come off of me. Jeez. That's how I would have taken it. And if you do that as a woman, I'm telling you, that's probably how your man take it too. See, video, yeah? if you think I like me, I tell you, right, right or so. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! 
You see, that's her, right? <laughs> she absolutely nobody. My husband at 3:30 a.m. He's sneaking in, you know, my kiss her upon her neck in my position her up properly. And this is the response that he gets. Oh, hell no. Call the man fly off our. <laughs> we gotta play it with the sound. Oh Wow. Oh my. <laughs> we can't play it no more. But these comments are sending me up the walls. Somebody said, oh my God, it would be nice if people just appreciated the humor, not be take it so personal, because the people them go off in this comment section. One woman said, my husband, if it's my husband, please wake me up. I'm always game. For you, let's go. There's a science behind this lady's your man will be in the best mood. That's the message we try to pass on. The other person says, oh, hell to the no. Do not wake me up in the morning at no 3.30 a.m. about your trying to get some. The next <laughs> Oh, so I'm good wife here. She says she, I sleep naked so I don't have to do all that. And he doesn't have to do all that struggling. We get right to it. Yeah, they're out there. You see, there's a science to this. There's a science to this. True story. I was in a relationship like that. I'm telling about this before. And I had the same response <laughs> me did get. It was the end of that relationship. The relationship was coming to an end, right? And that's exactly the response I got. And that response was like the biggest turnoff ever. After that, no matter what she do, every time she could have told it this way, that way, dress it up, dress it down, Every time I see it, I just cut my eye after it. I used to be like, all in my mind, me a cuss her, you know, you're thinking nasty, dirty. Come here, I'm making myself never feel anything for her again. That takes some training, but you can do it, right? Like, I'm not one of the men that we're going, oh, my God, she got to give me no love. Feel like a that cheat. No, I'm going on the road. But I'm like, <laughs> at first, I'm like, cuss you out. In my mind, uh, I, I see it. You know, she had tried to cock it up nice and when she ready for it, me never want it no more. So please don't do that to your husband then. Let the man get him thing when he's ready for him thing. If it's a good man, make him get well, it shouldn't be with a dirty man. That's not a good man. So if you have a good man, you have a man or your good man or you choose for there with him, right? Make sure the man get him things. I'm advocating for the brothers this morning. We stand in solidarity. Yes. <laughs> uh King Big says, morning, everybody. Well rested, blood are flowing at the right places, oxygen levels up. You understand? There's a science to this. And good woman and big woman understand this. See, the voice alone would have met me cut king. <laughs> she sounds like one of them transformers. Uh, Karen Notice says, my husband, I just lay there and take it. <laughs> she just lay there and take it. Yeah, yeah, fight up the man, them hours they are morning. The man come because he's ready. Right? I don't know about you, but me, at me, I have to be ready. Come have like 1,000 things on my mind at all times. I'm, I'm, I'm a person with a lot of responsibilities. I'm always running here, there, and everywhere doing this, that, and the other, thinking about what to be done next, what wasn't done that needs to be done now. Uh, all this. So me, I have to be ready. Right? So if me ready, and you ready, is a plus. Then we can go. Uh, British Jamaica girl said, no, sir, she must have been on something else. Dorothy T says, that's so over the top. No, I know over the top. Me get that already. Just like that. <laughs> Just like that already. It's embarrassing. It, I felt it was disrespectful. I started thinking all kinds of things because it make you feel like, say, you are so disgusted to this person. I don't want to deal with somebody who thinks, damn, they look at me and feel disgust. Wow. You don't want to deal with somebody like that. After that, you feel like, leave me alone, man. I don't even want to see you. And they do that, and then when they're ready for their share, them will come size up with you. Then you see nipples, titty nipples everywhere, and batty cheeks everywhere. Man, I don't even want to see you no more. Move from here, sir. I've been watching porn. I've been handling my own business. I don't need you. I have two hands. I'm good. Leave me alone. 
<laughs> go, go help yourself. Like how me have to go help myself. Bye. Yeah, I'm very vindictive like that too. What would be a that would be a total turn off, says Karen. And it is. It is. It also makes the man think things are going with you. Right? Because how could you be so I don't know. That's just that's how I would act if I was totally disgusted. So that's how the man is gonna take it. Like, do I disgust you? I can understand if you're not in the mood and you're like, babe, stop. Come on, man. Let me sleep. I'm tired. I promise I'll get you back later or something. You know, it's all on, you know them say a soft answer, turn it away, right? Yes, yes, yes. It's always like that. Ladies, you know, the woman, if she's soft, that's what men find sexy is your softness. Not when you like a transformer or a robot, you know, when I am, I am, I am Robocon. Oh my God. And that's what it sounds like. To, <laughs> that's what it sounds like to us. We don't want that. We turned off forever. Life through Erica TV says, for real, I can't. Maybe he bothers her all the time. She just wanted a nap, and they just finished doing it, and he wants it again. No, she have on the wall our clothes. They're not just finished doing nothing. Them didn't have time to go put on back clothes and all that. It wasn't done properly, and it was You're supposed to just drop asleep after. Naked, just like how it started. So, no, that looked like the man ready for some because the two of them fully clothed and him just couldn't get none. <laughs> she was not in the mood. Or like somebody say, he, he messed up our dream. She was having one of them romantic dream. Her and Selvin are in Jamaica on the beach kind of thing. Selvin comes out of the water, sweat dripping off his body because the sun is hottest Jamaica and the water is glistening everywhere. And him six pack up and him chest square and chop up. And here you come. But that's why she asked her. Oh my God! You freak up the dreaming at the wrong place. Because it was about to go down. She was about to give Selvin some. Selvin. <laughs> Selwyn. There's some old time names. Anybody you hear named Selwyn? He was born probably like in the 40s or 30s or 50s. Selwyn. Maybe even in the 60s. Yeah. What are some old Jamaican or old Caribbean man name? Me asked you this before. I asked y'all this before about old women name. And y'all had a whole lot of name like Gertrude and so on and so forth. What, is, <laughs> what are some old Jamaican man name? Caribbean man name. Not just Jamaican, but Car Ernest. <laughs> you still Philbert. Philbert. Phil Bert. And you know we're not going to say Phil Bert. You, your mother might have thought that sounded good. No, you is Phil Bert. <laughs> Phil Bert. Egbert. Egbert. Cock yeah, this go for shop for me. Mervin. Lord God. <laughs> I don't think Mervin is. <laughs> we have a Mervin here now. Mervin the point Jamaica Kerr right now is. <laughs> go off family and Winston. Is who calling them pick the Winston? <laughs> Uncle Winston. Winston. Talbert. Tal Jesus Christ. If your name Talbert, you're definitely from the 50s. About <laughs> you're not even in the 60s or 70s. 60s are my mother time period, right? You're not in the 60s or 70s. 50s, you did that, right? Delroy. Me no know, you know. Delroy kind of. Mm. <laughs> Trevor. Del Desmond. Clifton. I had an uncle named Cliffy that had my uncle where he used to drunk all the time. And boy, I think the rum preserved him because he lived a long life. <laughs> uh, walk no Uncle Cleavy. Uh, anytime he saw my grandfather, him straightened up like him sober. Walk, walk, walk. Grandpa walk out of view. Him stagger again. This man used to stagger and hug up banana tree and lean up and think about it. And then stagger gone in the yard again. Big up to Uncle Cliffy and rest in peace. Gertrude. That, that's the woman named them. Percy, Cedric, De Desmond. <laughs> oy, oy, the Philbert and, oh God, Winston. I think people still naming them. <laughs> Pick the Winston, you know. <laughs> Mr. Dan, if he needs a travel partner. Or oh, Ivan Wallace. Lennox, Lennox. Well, mm, uh, yeah, Jasper. <laughs> Jasper. <laughs> Delroy. Delroy. Percy, per oh God, Percy is one. Herman, 
Herman, you definitely from the fifties. Herman, <laughs> Roy, 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 you are from the seventies. Roy, Roy is a big man name, but him not, not so old. We are talking about like grandparents name, old man name. Well, them used to name picnic old man name back in the day too. See, they call him Roadman. Oh, the traveler, Cleveland. That's my grandfather's name, Cleveland Smith. <laughs> My husband's name was Headley Albert Notice. Headley? Headley? That's an old name. That's an old name. Karen, you not old. That, that's an old name. You see? Them used to give people them name the Errol. Uncle Errol. Gilbert. Like the storm. What? What? Wild Gilbert. Like the storm. Gilbert. Hezekiah. Now you know Hezekiah, him born in the church. Fe him grandmother rock our head so with the big hat and him have to go church every Sunday. If you come out with a name like Hezekiah, then <laughs> you know Rupert. Rupert is the one. Oh my god. Montague. Jesus Christ. I wouldn't even pick this up. So flow, my dad name is Cleavy. God rest his soul. British Jamaican girl. Yes, that's what they used to call my grandfather. Cleavy. Morning, Uncle Cleavy. Evening, Uncle Cleavy. But his name is Cleveland Smith. I know a Guyanese Clev what? Clev Roy? Cleve Roy. Them, them just too much. They, they did overboard. Them shouldn't do the kid like that. I know <laughs> Cleve Roy. Who what am I supposed to do with this name? That picnic they should I get up and ask that as soon as them name him. What am I supposed to do with that name? You really name me Cleve Roy? Cleve, I'm gonna go out into the world, you know. I'm gonna be big one day. Cleve Roy, you give me mommy. Cleave Rye, out of all the name in the middle of the world, you give me Cleave Rye. Oh, God. Fitz Rye. Fitz Rye. Fitz Rye is one of them. Roy is my father's name. Rufus, Eustace, and Rufus. Jesus Christ. That <laughs> Eustace and Rufus. And when them combine them names, you they know. Eustace Rufus Emmanuel Brown. What is your name, son? My name is Ufos Rufus Rufus Eustace. I'll make you say it. Ufos Rufus Rufus Eustace Ezekiah Emmanuel, bro. God have mercy. Simon. Speak Felix Fitzroy. Israel. Israel is a cute name. I think I would have named him. If I have a next little boy, I probably would have named him Israel. Because you know what Israel means to us already, but Israel. Erica Dean says, my kid's father, mother, too. Told me to name my son Herman. <laughs> and my son is now 23 years old. My son would hate me now in 2023. So I guess you didn't name him Herman then. Because Herman in a 2023 is not working out. He'll have to come up with a name for himself that's cool. Audrey Wright says Rastan. <laughs> Rastan or Ralston. Ralston. Rastan. Wilbert. Hore Hor what? Horacio? I knew us. You know what? I knew one kid in school in junior high named Horacio. But Horacio was from like Spanish speaking, kind of mixed with Caribbean, something. Anyway, Karen Notice. That's his name. He said not to name our son after him. Oh, Jaja. -ja. Let me see who again. Mas Joe. Mas Joe. Uh, Isaiah. Biblical name, Isaiah, that can go on still in 2023. Um, Augustus, Rufus Augustus, Emmanuel, Ishmael, Isaiah, Wilbert, <laughs> Smith. <laughs> Live on the air with SoFlo, good morning. SoFlo, a prosper, yeah. What, go on, prosper. You can hear me better than now. Yes, man, it look like you get a new phone. What? Ah, uh, no, 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 <laughs> Wait, <laughs> but I hear name that. Yeah, but when you see me, I'm going to be a king. 
Ole, de tager mit kænd, så vi går i kænd, de kan vi kaste dem. Åh. Yeah, let's try to now. Jeg har en dag. Nej. Big up, big up, my own family. Now that's when you're going to speak up me, you know. Ken Ryan. Ken Ryan. Ken Ryan. Ken Ryan. Zephaniah. But two hands, let me tell my youth, my youth, my youth, I'm doing them. Yeah. All right, so you're full now. You know you know you're gone underwater. Prosper. Prosper. Yeah. You're gone underwater now. You see, I just see them phone you have, man. Mommy Cham, brass, blood, and what's up? You can't go underwater. I say it was a good new phone you get, but you're gone, you're gone underwater now. You know? Can you hear me better? And then I'll be blue too. Better not? Yeah, half and on. Half and on. Yeah, I mean, I know, sir. Can't see it. See there? You can have a game, yeah. yes. Mm -mm, it mm -hmm. not going to work. The last word me hear was, I no know, sir. And then everything else was, oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we always hear you when you say, can you hear me now? We always hear the part. <laughs> but okay. after that, okay. we don't hear okay. nothing. After that, we don't hear yeah. the rest. Good to go. O only if Good to go. Go on. Go on. <laughs> Good to go. Go on. Hey, go you on. know, I'm fucking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway. The youth, man, test football. Yeah. I like your youth, test football. Yeah. The youth man took up two from the recovery and all that kind of thing yesterday. Have to, you know, have a good game. So, mm. but so we're coming this new every morning and, and nothing but love, brother. Nothing but love alone, brother. All right, love what is our respect, King? You give me nothing, you, you know. <laughs> and about inspiration coming I'm older than you. But I just love man as I listen to your man. It's like a your arm so your throat, my belly hurt, my mommy has to come tell me, hey, you need to be quiet. You need to be keep quiet. Man has our respect, my friend. Love alone, my friend. Love All right, alone. sir. All right, one love. One but love. No, go and get to talk to you about this round thing, okay? All right, sir. All right. It, his, his name is Fitzroy. The man said, never tell nobody saying name is Fitzroy. I can't matter, call him Ken, too, so I'm just tell everybody his name is Ken. So that's why he's listed as Ken Prosper. <laughs> I'm glad I never heard my name. Because it, it, it wasn't that bad. My name's still young. Uh, you can't go in at the corner. Uh, why me not know him? I'm so like him was underwater. My grandfather's name was Tessel. 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 That Tessel sound like... No, I have a cousin named Tespa. And I think her auntie named uh, Tessel. That sound like a woman name. But anyhow... Here we got to talk about this morning, right? Another stunner, Lawrence. Lawrence, what's going on? <laughs> Lawrence, why? It's a long time I ain't seen you, boy. What's going on? Watch a Jasper. Jasper is a wicked boy, you know. We well, can't stop with that. I'm drinking some. I'm drinking some fever grass and some uh, sour sap leaf. Fever grass and sauce up leaf this morning. No sugar, no nothing added. Just strength up the system, right? Sour sap for the back and all these things. All right. This is our topics. These are our topics for this morning. Another stunner. Uh, one of the guys in the Philip Paulwell situation, you know, with his baby mother being kidnapped with a 10 year old child and they were both killed right one of the guys in that had test had yesterday admitted that he was guilty well by this morning a couple of hours ago i think another one admitted that he's guilty as well so what we're hoping for in this story is that they not only say they're guilty but they also tell the whole tale of what exactly took place and all of who was involved. So, because, you know, people are still doubtful. Some people are saying, wait till this go to court. I bet you hear Philip Paulwell's name call in here. 
as a part of the orchestration of this. A lot of people are saying, leave that man alone. That man is not involved. And they would have called his name already if he was. So we're kind of waiting, anticipating. Karen, notice, big up yourself. I appreciate you greatly trying to see what's going on, right, in this case. So we're going to talk about that because it's a pretty lengthy article piece on that NBA star Dwight Howard. You know, uh, it's not all about the Caribbean, right? See that, right? So, yeah. So NBA star Dwight Howard. Um, Dwight Howard. This is, this one is called Dwight Howard Exposed. I don't know if y'all see what's going on with Dwight Howard. So Dwight Howard has been hit with a lawsuit, right? A lawsuit that he is hoping to get dismissed. In this lawsuit is a man that dresses as a woman that says that they and Dwight Howard had an entanglement, um, a, a, a forced entanglement. Yeah. But it gets weirder. So we're going to talk about that when we get to that. In the Beachy Stout case, witness recants, take back his testimony. We're going to talk about that. There's an announcement to be made about an event that you might want to treat yourself to. And then updates, more updates on the Beachy Stout case. And of course, there's one story here about a Canadian restaurant owner that got killed in Jamaica. A Canadian restaurant owner that got killed in Jamaica. I don't know if you know about that story as well. So we're going to talk about that as well, right? Here's the announcement that has to be made. Treat yourself. If you haven't been to Jamaica in a while, you have time now. Today is October 27th. You will have the whole month of December. And then you will uh, a whole month of November, and then you will have some of December to save up some money, book a ticket, go treat yourself. Right? There is unruly fest, December twenty second, at Russell Morant Bay, Saint Thomas, Jamaica. Unruly fest returns to Jamaica. Everybody, if you don't know, unruly fest is popcorn and friends concert. In Jamaica, it's like they have Bujabantan and Friends. And when you go to Bujabantan and Friends, guess who you get to see? You get to see people like uh, Barris Hammond, the legendary Mr. Barris Hammond, and a, and a group of other people. So, December 22nd in Jamaica, plan to be there. If you want to do a little bit of traveling, treat yourself to something. I don't know, flying for a weekend, something, see what it's like. So Unruly Fest is going to be keeping with Popcorn and Friends. It returns to Jamaica. And the headliners so far, them have Skilly Bang up there. Might not be your cup of tea. But they have I Wayne that's going to be performing there. One man can't satisfy her. And all them other songs there. The Ross I Wayne. And then you have Najiri, which is a new youth. You have some foreigners on there too, like Fabio Foreign. And a couple more people. I don't know. I see 21 Savage in Jamaica with Popcorn. So I'm thinking 21 Savage and a couple of other people might be on there as well. If you don't know it, Popcorn was the one that brought Drake to Jamaica. And it was a pandemonium fest because Drake ain't really cheap to book. Them guys command a million dollar fee for shows. We're talking about US dollars here. See? So, and Popcorn is... um. Related to Drake, true business, and then friendship as well. You have OVO Unruly, which in Canada, and then you have Unruly OVO, Jamaica, Drake, and Popcorn, both promote each other's brand and work together. They're my good brethren and stuff like that. So you, you never know who the surprise guest might be. Because I don't, when Drake came, he wasn't slated to be there. And that was a huge surprise. So... Early bird tickets are now available at www.officialpopcorn.com. General admission for this concert is $4,000. That's for the hold your horses. It's 4,000 Jamaican dollars, which is roughly 30 US dollars. And VIP is 8,000 Jamaican dollars, which is roughly 55 US dollars, right? So go and get your little 
admission or VIPR, whichever one you want to do. Ball on a budget. Unruly Fest was supposed to be in London this year as well. It was slated for November 30th. And I read this morning that it is cancelled. So shout out to my London people who was getting ready to go to Unruly Fest in the UK. But it's been cancelled as far as I know. I learned that this morning. Unruly Fest, December 22nd in Jamaica though, could be the place to be. All right, so you heard it here. Book your ticket if you're going to be on the island, all these kind of things, and let's go have some fun. All right. Um, I say Andrew Holness is begging the Jamaican people to please not lose hope. Don't give up. Don't give up on his administration. Don't give up on the dream of prosperity. Prosperity. Now, while he was saying don't give up on the dream of prosperity or don't lose hope, don't lose focus, don't be distracted, we have never been in this good spot for our future development before, ever. So let us not squander it because we have been distracted. This is what he said on Wednesday. We are speaking during, he was speaking during the handing out of keys. I don't know if you saw it. He was handing out keys to homes and this is the country's latest cohort of homeowners in the national housing trust or nht it's shrewberry housing scheme in petersfield in westmoreland the area consists of 32 housing units made up of 14 one bedrooms and 18 studio homes so you know, uh, y'all know how I feel about this already, right? Election is coming, and now is the time to give out stuff, if you're ever going to give out stuff. Hold it till the right time. Give it out. Then call election. So then, member, you can't vote no other way. This man just gave you a house, right? But what I wanted to people to look at, I went and did some research. And I had to pull up this picture to show Uno. And what I wanted people to really look at was the host them <laughs> when we see the host them i said mm. this is the host them now remember don't give up don't lose hope the prosperity promise he promised prosperity this the prosperity promise the dream how want me do oh my gosh Okay. Whew, I thought I lost everything just now. When you look close, here is the house, them. See it here? That's the house. 32 houses. One bedroom and studio. <laughs> One bedroom. And studio houses, man build a whole community of these houses right here. <laughs> these houses right here. I, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to diss nobody or make the people them who live here feel like uh, they're better than them or something. My living room is definitely bigger than that house. Right? And I know people are gonna say, me I will tell us how they can't see it. You know? See us there. Now. I know people are gonna say, "We're so ungrateful," because that little house there is better than nothing. A shack is better than sleeping outside. I understand that. I get that. I get that. But in the name of prosperity, though, when you <laughs> you you hold them little house here all year long till oh right around election time, you give out a whole bunch of them, and the people them go up and get their keys, and they're very happy. And these things now talk the truth, people. Look on else. Let me put it closer. Look. What that? What is that? Prosperity. This is what prosperity looks like. Yeah, for 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 a lot. <laughs> Audrey Wright said, 
On the right side, you can't even fit a coach in it. <laughs> They're going to have to custom build furniture inside there for this house. And and again, I don't want nobody to feel like all oh, them people are laugh after we, you know. And I think that was one of the studio apartments. Now, to be fair and honest, I don't want to do this. And then people say, why you show them that and go and like say, so all of the house them look. Because I mean, I like when people call me out and I'm wrong even though I'm big enough to apologize. Now, this is the other one, right? So I'm guessing these are the one bedrooms that look like this. Now, quite honestly, I would take that. I would take that. It look decent, right? That one, they look a little better. And I'm guessing the other one is the studio. This one. That's the studio homes. Remember, I know what studio means, you know. Studio means everything is in one kind of thing. Uh, probably only a bathroom is separated. Now, I remember Jamaicans complaining on this same platform right here. And them say, so flow, because I asked, do, do they get a tax return at the end of the year? <laughs> Ross Jada said, that's a, that's a bathroom. <laughs> ah. <laughs> A prosperity. This is what Andrew says is prosperity. And they built a whole community like this. Mm. I only hope the people them that formed this community. Because honestly, let me tell you what happened, right? When you build those homes, those kind of homes will look like that for low-income people. What ends up happening is over time, that whole community becomes a crime-infested area kind of place. And these kind of things. I only hope that the people who get these homes end up being people who love life, respect each other, and live in peace and harmony in there. Because really not the size of your home still. You know, it's the level of your thoughts. So I only hope that that happens. But we, all, we, we know all too well how these things turn out, right? It's like when them bill... The garrison them. You see what end up happening over there. Any place where people are very, very low income are gathered, it seems to be like it turns into eventually a crime-infested area. I mean, hope that's not going. They can also expand them. Darty T, they can expand them. Well, I don't know about that. Because I meet a brethren in Walmart the other day that was telling me that He's in trouble in Jamaica now because back in the day when they were giving out houses, he got one. And him said, after that, him get him visa and fly out, come to America. And he works on ships, and um, like reconstruction and cleaning of ships and stuff like that, uh, refurbishing of ships. So he make good money now. And him say, him go back to Jamaica and him start build up him thing, him put on one next wing, a next side, and start go up with it, a next floor. And now... They came back for it and they're telling him that he didn't have any permission to build anymore on what was originally given to them. So I don't know how the stipulation of the paperwork go. I don't want to act like I do. That's the same thing. Matalan sold in Greater Portmore, Patsy Barrent. Well, if them can expand them is a good thing. Yes, expand. But how much can it hold when them just get it? I mean, I know. I, know. I don't think they can expand it, though. But I'm not going to say if they can or can't. Uh, I look up the NHT. Because I remember people saying, so Flo, you know how long we are paying an NHT and we can't get no benefits out of it. It's just money that they're collecting and teething from us. So these houses have to do with the NHT. So I'm guessing they must have heard the people them rumbling, complaining. And they decided to give them back some of the money in the form of houses they're also giving back uh refunds for those who have paid into nft for up to 2015 or something like that so i did a little research what is the nh nht not nft what is the nht percentage in jamaica how and how does nht work in jamaica and all these things it says that the applicants are awarded 20 points for every 52 weeks of contribution into the NHT. 
if you were, for example, contributing for 10 years, the same as 520 weeks, then you would earn 20 points times 10 years, which is 200 points. And persons who earn less income earn more points in the selection system. So I guess the NHT was put forward to do what? To help lower income Jamaicans acquire the Jamaican dream then, if you would say that, to be able to take out loans, build a house, possibly, working Jamaicans. It goes on to tell you everything else about the NHT that you need to know. For those who don't understand it, Google it. What are the benefits of paying into the NHT in Jamaica? And it says the main benefit is loan to assist in building, in buying, or improving homes. In addition to housing benefits, employees are entitled to access a refund with interest on payments made into the trust. Hmm. Interesting. Is it mandatory in Jamaica? Someone asks, can I stop contributing to the NHT after I have obtained a loan? The answer was no. Jamaican law says all persons between the ages of 18 to 65 who earn at least the minimum wage are required to make NHT contributions. So that's taxes taken out of your pay then, isn't it? Come and know them to leave it to the Jamaican people because we wouldn't pay a cent. What are the rules for NHT, it says? And there's a long list of stuff. To qualify for an NHT loan, you must be currently contributing to the trust and have made at least 52 weeks of contribution. You must have paid up with interest, any outstanding contributions that were due, like self-employed contributions, etc. You must be between the ages of 18 and 70, and you must be earning an income which allows you to repay the loan. So if you don't have no job, you can get one of these loans from the NHT loan them. And if you haven't been paying into it, you can't get a loan from it as also either way. Just a little heads up for those of you who might be thinking of accessing it and using the benefits. You have to pay into it. How much is the NHT loan amount in Jamaica 2023? And the amount is 7.5 million Jamaican dollars. Effective July 1st of 2023, the National Housing Trust, NHT, will be increasing its loan ceiling for more loan benefits, the increase will see an additional $1 million available to the contributors. Now, that's not such a bad thing. So it was $6.5 million before. It's $7.5 million now. This represents a 15% increase in the general loan ceiling. Hmm. Start, start to sound a little bit good still. What age do you stop paying? Uh, education tax, how do I pay my um, housing trust in Jamaica? All these different questions and stuff. Now, the NHT refund, and this is from ijs.gov.jm, Jamaica government site. Uh, the NHT is now refunding contributions paid up to 2015. How long does it take to qualify? If you have ever contributed to the NHT, your waiting time to access the benefit upon registering with the NHT is two years. So, if, <laughs> two years. However, please note that your monthly contributions must be made on time for the 12 months leading up to the immediate proceeding and the date of your loan application. All the information is here online. Go to uh, jsjis.gov.jm. Now, refunding contributions for 25, um, up to, that are paid up to 2015, which means that's like an income tax check if you've been paying into it. The full story. The National Housing Trust is advising clients that contributions made up to the year of 2015 are now being refunded. 
This was disclosed by the NHT's Assistant General Manager for Corporate Communications and Public Affairs, Dwayne Burbick, during the Love 101 radio program, Good Morning Minister, on Wednesday, July 12th. This year, 2023, we are refunding contributions that were made in 2015 or earlier. And we actually, well, on there, and we actually refund contributions to a rate of 2% per annum. So I guess I get a 2% increase per year for all the years that you've paid into it, all the way up to 2015. As much as persons who contribute to the NHT in 2015 or earlier may now apply for a refund of those payments and those made prior to that year for which they were not refunded. They're even given back pay. Your contributions are always here, they said. <laughs> the NHT holds those contributions. It is your money. We just hold it. We don't do anything with it. We, we don't do anything with it. So whatever it is that you are ready to access, that the NHT does a refund of those contributions. Persons who have a mortgage that they receive directly from NHT should not apply for a refund as it is automatically will be credited to their account with an effective date of January 1st of the eighth year. Exceptions to these are beneficiaries under the Combined Mortgage Program or the Joint Finance Mortgage Program and public sector employees who are NHT mortgagers and meet specific conditions, retirees and expatriates returning to Jamaica for good are also exempt. So, me and you can access that. Returning residents, expatriates who are returning to Jamaica for good, you are exempt. Retirees, exempt. I guess because retirees can no longer pay into it or something, and you have to have a job that says you are paying into it that you can afford to pay back this loan when they give you the loan. Persons in receipt of validity, Pension, invalidity pension from the Ministry of Labor and Social Security or the beneficiary of a deceased contributor may apply for a special contribution refund. You hear that part? Kind of found people dead gone and left money on the table that you don't know about. So very rarely them give back something. So listen, persons in receipt of invalidity pension from the Ministry of Labor and securities, social security, or the beneficiary of a deceased contributor. Granny used to contribute to NHT. Granny passed. You get left with something. All right. That deceased, the, con the, the beneficiary of, your, of a deceased contributor may apply for a special contributions refund. Persons are encouraged to use the NHT contribution refund online application service just type in nht contribution refund online application service and go from there mm. i can't complain i can't say this is something bad i just don't like the house them i think the <laughs> i don't like the house them i just think the house them is like them could have they could have done better than this with the houses but hey I guess something is better than nothing. And I'm talking from a place of, I have a house already, right? So I'm not seeing it from a person's perspective who don't have one. Right. So NHT, the money get chopped out. Yeah, and the little bit where them left them build up some max matches, max matches box houses and pass them out. It is what it is, man. May the people who live in this community make it peaceful. And when I go to Jamaica, I'm probably absolutely sure I'm going to go. Because this is this is around the ends with me there. Anyway, when I'm there in Jamaica. So, I go over there and go look. Because the house might look different in person. It might look a little bit different in person. You don't know. So, I'm going to go look to see. It have a little veranda and all these things, you know. 
it, it kind of look good still. It's just tiny, so tiny and live so close to next door people and I don't know. But I want to tell you something, right? You see, when you have a place to rest your head, <laughs> when you have a place to rest your head, you know, to call your own, you know, you can you can start life. You have a place of peace where you can rejuvenate, close your door behind you, and yeah, Julie Tapper says so small though. King Big say a dolly house that. <laughs> Batches says no, it's gonna look the same. It's gonna look the same when I reach there. Watch when I go, I'm gonna go there, and and I'm gonna video from there. So I'll show y'all what it look like on video in person. House might look smaller in person. Poor people don't deserve anything good. Jesus Christ. I don't know y'all, man. I guess they're, you know, and you know, Jamaicans are so used to getting just the crumbs off the table anyways. So the, all them something here is enough to win an election, you know, because that whole community and that whole side of Jamaica probably is going to vote for JLP when election time come. Because they're going to say, well, you know, so the whole heap of house, them build up for the people, them run a Peter's field. So, Mr. Bram Bram says, them don't look good at all. King size bed can't hold in a dot. Only a queen size and the dresser in the room beside table in the passage. <laughs> Julie Tapper said, but when the people start to add on to it, it will look better. How the people them are going to add on to it? This is your neighbor house you're looking at right here, so next door, you know. And there's another one of them right here, so upon the other side, you know. So where are they going to build on to? It's going to be a narrow shotgun house going straight back. Yeah, yeah, talk about build on. Where are they going to build on to that? You can go up. Rotted. I guess. I guess. I don't want to make anybody feel bad. And I keep repeating that. Because I don't want people to feel like, say, me go and like me better than people. I just don't like the house. I don't like it. I feel, I honestly, this is my honest feeling. I feel like them house here was dashed together. Because, you know, them know so they're going to call election sometime soon. So dash the house them together as a project. And because the people are complaining about the NHT money and how they're not accessing it and nothing is being done with that money. That's why they put that article out. That says, we don't do anything with your money. With us, hold it. That's not, that's not how any lending system or any borrowing system, lending system, taxing system works. They don't just hold your money. You see, people try to not educate the people. None of these people just hold your money. That's like you coming to me and you say, so Flo, every month me I give a $400 seat here. And me, I got to tell you, say, me just hold that money there. No, me spend it. I spend that money. Me use the money and invest in some stock market um, stocks. I use the money and invest in some other things. Me use the money and open up a couple of business around the place, right? Because everybody put into it. It's so much of it. We open up a couple other businesses around the place and we're hoping for these profits to flip in these businesses. Now, when, once them they start to flip and profits are being made, then you know, see how long it takes. Eight years it takes. For you to get a refund. So every eight years you access that, right? In eight years of you paying into this every paycheck for eight years straight, you know how much money you give them? So no, they don't just hold on to your money. And this is education from our Jamaican people. They do not hold on to your money. Them spend it. Them use it. The same thing that your bank does to your money. Don't think when you put your money, when you put your money in the bank, people be direct deposit my bank check, my um work check every week or every other week how we get paid. And it's just sitting there. It's not just sitting there. The money that gone out to work, they borrow money from you when you think you are saving money. They're actually taking your money, borrowing it from you, using it to conduct business, and then making a profit to where they can pay you back your money like they never used it and keep their business going that they started using your money to start it. So I go, if you didn't know that already. Right, so they're not just holding it, holding your money there, waiting for you to come get the money. Live on the air with Soflo. Good morning. Yes, Soflo, my man. What going, family? 
Yeah, don't worry about the house then there, you see? Mm. You, remember, you know Longsville Park? Which one? If you know Longsville Park, remember Matalan when Matalan used to build house? Mm -hmm. You know Matalan, you know them here? Matalan, one of them. They used to build the matches box, them gay people. You have some other angels. Mm. And right now, if you go over Longsville Park and angels is still. You see where people end up with them little studio there. What it was those same studio that the only thing they didn't have on the veranda. Mm -hmm. Go Langsville Park and see them. three story house and then something out of them same matches box there. Mm -hmm. And when you pass, I go to front angels there. So mm -hmm. just look right across from KFC. So them have you see all of them also over there, sir? Mm -hmm. I used to know little studio matches box there. We used to wonder. Where them are going to build pan, But trust me, you know Jamaica people stay. Right. You just want to match his back to the piece of land. Start off. We start and off. We're gone, start we're know. We don't know where they get space. Mm -hmm. But when you look, some three four house. If you, when you have a carry land, you have a come carry land you come from. Mm -hmm. Turn up um free port like a Langsville. So, and go right round. And you see awesome up there. You would be amazed. Yeah. Wow. This is Because when I when me, me didn't supposed to get one in our mess, I said, no, me not want to get much is box there. And God believe me right now, me didn't get one much is box, me that did take it. So you regret not taking it? We regret not taking oh, it. I saw. When me tell us some three story house in you know, out of them much is box there. Go along, Zill. Hmm. You can know Salt River. You ever go Salt River on your part? Yes, man. Yes, man. You turn up Long Zill, that's all right before you reach a Salt River, that's all. But many things that all them house, there are people build up them own house, pan them own like a piece of land and something. No, no, no. I no, saw no. them start off. No, I saw them start off. All right. Here, yeah, look at one back, matches back to the little room and a little bathroom. All right, you can then. turn from one, one put one of your hand and church over the next mm -hmm. time over this one. You just put out your hand and you touch the wall and you face to them now. Well, I'm glad you called and said that so we get a different perspective in it because for those of us who don't know, we are looking at the little house and we are saying, boy, this don't look good. Them could have done better yeah. than this. But you are talking about the potential of the people and what they are going to do with it and what we've seen them do with them before. Not true? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All so, right. no, fact, we're not, so my people are not going to really complain because they don't have the idea. Guess what? Mm -hmm. No land at their bottom, but land at their top. You make it top the water. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel awesome. love us. Big up yourself. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. All right, that put a smile on my face. That made me feel better. Not true? Because I, I know I've seen the other one. The brother tell me, say, boy, I'm Bill of Fee, man. Them come tell him now, say he didn't have permission to build it up. So I'm going like them, see him supposed to knock it down or something. But if that's the case, man, and they can build on it, I mean, I see the room for Bill, but somebody said them can go up. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. Like to Erica TV says, I am not saying it's not because of the election. Maybe why he's doing this. And your wholeness is a piece of work. But the house can be improved in the future. Having a foot in the gate is what's important. I understand that now. That's why I love talk with you. Know, we fellowship and we show each other different views of things. You know, me coming here, I see things one way. I mean, I'm big up certain people. I'm just saying we come in here seeing things one way. And somebody show us another way, right? So big up to the people them who get them house, and big up to the innovators who I'm sure will have those houses looking different sometime in the future. I make where I wonder if I see them like a matches box house them where them did start out with look so. Kaz Robinson says so flow parish council have to grant you permission to build, and that might be his problem. That's what he said. He said, You sure I know you? He said, you tell, uh, not, not you, but him tell me in a Walmart, so him said the parish council have to grant you permission to bill. And the parish council at the time granted him permission to bill, but that parish council is no longer around. So now the new parish council 
who seem like him want go around taking away people like um people house and stuff he's the one that's saying you have no permission to build and we have no no um record of any paperwork saying that you were ever given permission to build right crystal g says he didn't go to the parish council that is why he's having problems well it's an old parish council as we said earlier where is it? as we said earlier the cm studio them selling greater portmore seeing well hey we're so used to getting crumbs, man, off the table, like I said before, right? That any little crumbs we get, we're always happy with it anyway. And we always tell ourselves, say, a little bit better than nothing, right? It's the same thing how we always take serious thing, make joke. Look, because so much serious thing going around, we, if we don't take serious thing, make joke, we stress out and death. So it's the same thing with the same mentality of, you know, a little bit better than nothing. And we'll take the little bit and we'll keep on going. You hear what the sister just said? She said when she see them first years ago, she was like, no, nah, I don't want them there. And today, after seeing what others that took them did with them, she's now saying, damn, I wish me did take it. So, hey, it is what it is. But just to let you know that it's out there and just to let the people them know, look into this NHT thing. The loan is seven point five million dollars it was 6.5 mil it's now 7.5 million dollars which i guess is a part of the prosperity uh campaign forget every jamaican to feel some level of prosperity and put yourself together and go start somewhere right keep a positive look a positive outlook on everything we're not gonna come negative up the stuff you know he said that we have essentially reached a new equilibrium in our economy. And now we're going to transition to ensure that the benefits from that new equilibrium in our economy can be converted very quickly into providing you with services and amenities that will improve the quality and well-being that you want to enjoy. And that is where your government is now focused. This is Andrew Holness speaking to the people. In pressing home the reason why the country's electors, who are now in election mode, should not lose faith in his administration, Holness said that the improvement in the economy is the working of his JLP government and that the country's positive ratings by international rating agency Standard & Poor's was the first ever of its kind amid all the economic challenges. Now, Standard & Poor's is a global rating system that rates different countries, how their economy is doing. Them give you an A, B, C, D, like grading you on a um, report card in school. And on September 13th, they upgraded Jamaica's long-term foreign and local currency issuer default rating, or it's called the IDR rating. From a B plus to a BB minus, which means it ain't that big of a change to me. A B is a B, but according to the ratings, B minus to B plus to BB minus is like one more step up, I guess, with a stable outlook for Jamaica's economy. Our economy has gotten the highest ratings it has ever gotten in the history of ratings. In our economy, wholeness continues by saying what you feel may not necessarily square up with this. This whole economy is booming thing. Everything is going good. What you are feeling may not necessarily square up with this, but that is because you still have to contend with all the other issues that are around. You know, like crime, violence, the murder rate, sky high, these all kind of things. But because our economy is doing well, you should maintain a hopeful and an optimistic posture that your government, which is speaking of the JLP, will increase the pace at which it delivers these services to you. I don't know. So sometime in the future, you will be able to access the NHT loans faster than eight years. And then you have to wait two years after you apply to actually get it. And then... You know, all these kind of benefits that are out there, when they might take a decade to give it to you, he's saying that they're on the track 
to dispensing these to the people at a faster pace. So what y'all go through right now might not feel like we're on the road to prosperity, but hang in there. Keep the faith. We are going to deliver it to you, is what he is saying. With that message combined, one thing about Andrew Holness is this. He's a good speech person. And <laughs> he's a good speech person. I'll give that to him. But hey, after seeing the house them and hearing what the sister said about the house and looking at the optim looking at it optimistically, cut them bill already, right? The houses are already built. So it's not like we can actually say, you know what? We don't like those. Those are not good for the people. Bulldoze all of them. They're not going to do that. The houses are built. They built a whole community. 30-something houses. Them built already. Somebody are going to take them. So with that said, and that deed already done, the most we can do is be optimistic at this point that from here on forth, the outcome is good. People can secure, secure the environment, somewhere to call their own. At least them know they are foreign. Like, you know, the Americans are out on the streets in the U.S., Cause we really, we really be looking though. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit. We really be looking at Jamaica life. Why some people poor, you know? I want to tell you, sir. I never see homeless people in Jamaica. I did not see until this day. I have never seen a homeless person in Jamaica. They might live in a little shack up in the bush. They might live in a little dilapidated place around there so that them can't afford to fix up yet. They might live, you know what I'm saying, in our zinc house around us. But I have never seen homeless people in Jamaica. The only homeless people I've ever seen in Jamaica are people who are usually troubled mentally. This is facts. They're troubled mentally, so they'll go wandering away from their home and then we walk road. And this are under any government. This not have nothing to do with JLP and PMP. That's just how it's always been. So when we're in foreign... And we in a way look a nice house them. And we are talk about Jamaica and them poor and how them poor. I want you to think about them something here. Right? Another thing I wanted to say this morning was a mass shooting went on again yesterday. Some guy who is labeled as a firearms instructor slash ex-military personnel slash mental patient who just got let out of a mental facility, slash, all them the him record, right? Well, he picked up a rifle yesterday, went out into public, shot up a whole bunch of people. I think 16 or more people were dead when I last checked, right? And they still, I don't know if they found him yet, but up until I went to bed last night, he was still not found. Now, it was funny to see Jamaica bringing 18 now, 18 have died now in a one go. One man killed 18 people. And I don't think they've found him yet. Right. I think that guy is planning his exit. He's not hiding somewhere preserving himself to surrender. I think he's planning his exit. And his exit is going to be the grand finale. Which means more people might die. Whatever big gathering they're having in that state, anywhere, I wouldn't be going to it. This is where I think he's coming in hot. And it, it, he died, Missy. Oh, 18 died. Yes. Because they haven't found him yet. He's still on the loose. Now, when things like this happen, the first thing we said to wife yesterday, I said, you see, that's why me. Me not go outside. You can't catch me in at the grocery store. I thought about, let's walk around. Oh, let's go over to the clothing section. Of let's, see, let's see if them have anything over here on sale. Oh, let's go over to the other side now. No, I'm telling you all the truth. I have a list when I go to the store. And I make sure I always go to like two of the same store. See? So I know how the store laid out. I know what all my bread is on. I know what all the rice they pan. I know what all the two tin of mackerel they may go get the pan. I know what, which part the meat section there. I know which part this, the, that, the. And I'm in zoom, 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 zoom. Hi, how you doing? Cash out, buy. I'm going to hang out in a them place there. Because things like these always happen. Now, false sense of security. When you're in foreign, telling yourself, Jesus Christ, Jamaica, be a killing a go on down there. Be afraid. Basa, 
No sa is the same thing. Is the same for some reason we feel safer here, and I think it's because they almost always get the person who did it. You know, whereas in Jamaica, you know, they're killing them go on and then them can't find who do it and these kind of things. And then it, it not only that, the, the response of medical personnel, the location of state of the art hospitals with top of the line technology and care, all these things are like close by. So they're airlifting people. They're rushing you this way, rushing you that way. If gunshots go off right now at the Walmart that's close to my house, there are two big police stations not too far, a firehouse, and two hospitals close by. So you already know, right? It's a whole different scene. But we don't explain these to Jamaicans. I saw a lot of Jamaicans on the comments yesterday saying, yes, so all you know, um, all you know Jamaicans who run with Ghana foreign, with your, you have your green card and your citizenship and this and that. I don't want to tell me nothing about Jamaica not safe. Uno not safe. Those were the kind of comments that were that were under there. And I thought when we have to compare ourselves to the worst situations to say we're better, then we're not better. You had to go for the worst. You had to go for a mass shooting where 16, 17, 18 people dead in a one go to say something like that. But it doesn't it doesn't change the fact that the double murders and the triple murder. Right now I'm looking at the screen right here. Double murder near St. James School leaves those inside traumatized. That's Jamaica. And that was seven hours ago. Double murder near St. James School. Next one, man pleads guilty to murdering his mom. Next one, see, so there's a whole heap of murder, murder story come out of Jamaica too. So nobody feel like say it's okay to compare to the U.S. And I also tell people this all the time. It's 50 states in the U.S. And in some of these states, they're so big, you can fit three and four Jamaica into that one state. And that's just one of the states. There are some places that nothing happens, and then there are other places where things happen all the time. But regardless, comparing Jamaica U.S. is kind of like comparing one state to a whole country kind of thing. But without all that said, though, I don't want my Jamaicans in the U.S. to feel like that false sense of security and start telling yourself, because I'm not for that. I, I encourage situational awareness. Go outside with your head on a swivel. It can happen anytime. It can be in traffic while you're at the traffic light. It can be in the grocery store. It can be while you're at the beach with your family. It can be while you're in the mall just taking a stroll and looking through a few stores. Anywhere. And it happens all the time. So don't lose that. And don't start turn your back upon your yard. Oh, I'll never go back to Jamaica. Bitch was thrown behind me so far. I don't care what you say. That place, they fall apart. Stay in touch with your roots. Stay in touch with Jamaica, your birth country. Stay in touch and know the place. And then you will feel more comfortable regardless of what's going on there. The longer you stay away is the more scarier you're going to become with the outside news. If you're outside looking in all the time, it's scary. But if you're there all the time and you're here all the time, you can weigh and balance and say, you know what? Why things go, things are going bad yard, you know, I mean, hope them get better. Jano a star. But at the same time, you can look over here too and say, I can't wait to get my ticket and, and get a break from this car. Rotted. Right? Unable to listen, I'll do it later. Have a blessed day, a blessed weekend, guys. Angel D. Angel D, have a great one. All right. Have a wonderful weekend, my friend. Let's get into some of our stories, though. Um, we've had enough of this whole Andrew thing and NHT thing and loans and houses and whatnot. I don't know if y'all know the story about this brother right here. This is our, it's not a returning resident story. He's a visitor. The story that I said earlier about a Canadian restaurant owner that got killed in Jamaica. Right. So let's put a face to the story first. That's him. We're going to talk about him right now. 
right? That's the bird right there. So you see who it is that I'm talking about. All right. Somebody told us that why well, so flow, you know, say my they one of them kind of man they still. That's how the person talk. When they one of them kind of man they, they mean them kind of man they, and uh, um I guess he went to Jamaica and met somebody or somebody lured him to somewhere and it led to his death. That's what we were told. But then I saw the story. So we're going to get into the story. And it says the Clarendon police are continuing their probe into the murder of a Jamaican Canadian whose body was found with gunshot wounds in the bushes in Salt River Clarendon on Tuesday. The deceased is 43-year-old Merrick Aries, otherwise called Owen. Owen is, a reading, uh, Owen is a resident of Paddington Terrace in St. Andrew, and he is a resident of Ontario, Canada. Owen, along with his brother, Aries, is co-owners of the Diner's Corner. The Diner's Corner is a restaurant in Canada selling authentic Jamaican cuisines in downtown Ontario. Reports are that about 9.30 a.m. on Tuesday, Aries' body was found with what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the head and other sections of his upper body. He was found in bushes in Salt River area. A motor car that was rented by the Canadian was also found at the scene. Police investigators have so far established that the vehicle was rented from a company in St. James on October 14th, Saturday, October 14th. The same date Aries arrived in Jamaica. October 14th. Today is October 27th. All right. The car was to be returned on October 30th, which was which would be two days from now. The police are theorizing that Aries may have been lured to the area and then robbed by his attackers and then killed. Meanwhile, tributes are continuing to flow for the deceased restaurant owner on social media. Let me take this call real quick because it might pertain to this. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Hi, good morning, SoFlo. Good morning, family. To you sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, I just started a video. I rewind it. And to the part where the lady was screaming when her husband was out. Mm -hmm. um, I just wanted to say that happened to me one time. And I was in the middle of dreaming. The lot of numbers. Mm. I had five numbers when my husband woke me up. And you scream, screamed you screamed you just sc like that. Last weekend, I played a lotto. The five numbers I dreamed came down. So you didn't need the so, sixth number to win? Yes, and he woke me up before <laughs> I dreamed. Number. Uh, so, but you never scream him out like that again after, right? No. All right. Cause so, I'll, yeah, go so, ahead. So if that happens, you don't know what's going on. It, so so saying that you will never have um that feeling for her again. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's right. One thing with all you, you come up with all kind of excuses, boy, but it's all right. That's we, not uh, an excuse. <laughs> it's a true, true. <laughs> Watch this. Watch this. I know that you don't know. I don't know if you're watching, but that's the first part of the show gone a long time ago. And we're into a story right now about a Canadian restaurant owner that was killed in Jamaica. So people are going to start saying, I know that's a with that in the show. Lady. All right. Okay. Bye. <laughs> All right. All right. All right, I shouldn't answer, you know, but I thought it might have had something to do. Because sometimes we had do them story here, and somebody called and said, Soflo, that's my cousin. Let me tell you what really happened. It wasn't this. I was expecting that. 
but lo and behold, are something else. Now, I saw, um, I haven't seen Andre in a while. Wanna still follow Andre Stevens? I haven't seen him. He doesn't do his lives anymore or what? But anyhow, Andre put out one time a message to the LGBTQ community in Jamaica. And the message said that we are being targeted and they are lowering us because, you know, people get frisky online thing now reach Jamaica as well. People meet on apps. Slide in your DM on Instagram. Me, Liba, Clarendon, you, there, Moby, a comic will link up now. Yeah, and these kind of things. And the island is small, right? Right. So when he put that message out, there were some other stories that followed. And he also showed pictures of persons who are alleged to have been going around pretending they are gay luring these guys and then when them come them rob them and kill them and these kind of things so my mind just put that with what a person said to us so Flo, you know here about the canadian rest that's how i went to go look it up you know here about the canadian restaurant owner will get killed at jamaica um this week and i'm like no really this don't look good for jamaica and the person was like look it up but from what me I hear still is a B man, you know me I say and man lower him and him think him dog get batty and whatever and end up get killed. That's what people say. So that that kind of resonated with me. But I don't know if it's true. And I'm not saying that that is true because I don't want his family to be watching this and be like, why y'all talking about my brother like that? Because my brother wasn't even gay or whatever, right? Right. So we don't have no inside details. I'm telling you how I got to go look up the story, and then this is what I found, right? Okay, so the, 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 the Clarendon police are continuing their probe into the murder of this Jamaican Canadian. It's not, see, when you say Canadian restaurant owner, the first thing that comes to anybody's mind, let me talk straight. The, we have to be careful how we word things, see? Because the person who called me where, where left the message and said the Canadian restaurant owner, so flow. My mind already thought. A white man from Canada that owns a restaurant in Canada went to Jamaica on vacation and got killed. Robbed and killed. I said, this is look good. Not, not that black people getting killed is any less horrible, but you know how things are perceived. Jamaicans get killed on a regular basis till regular Jamaicans are just like, okay, that's our norm, right? Sorry said it happened to you, but that's our norm. White person, successful white business person, go to Jamaica and get killed, and they're not from there. That's a whole nother story. Law enforcement turnover. Every person is on deck trying to find out who did it and what happened. So it, it brings a whole different kind of vibe. So I had to go look it up. And when I looked it up, I found out it's a Jamaican that migrated to Canada that owns a restaurant in downtown Ontario, which a very popular restaurant, him and his brother together. So that's a whole different spin on the story. And again, not that it makes it any less worse. It is what it is. It's bad still. But we don't want to go around saying, oh, sec just like the other headline uh, Monday, right? That said, this is the second American woman killed in jamaica this month and when i went to go look them up it was two jamaican women who happened to live overseas but they frequent jamaica a lot and their people are into things and things led to things family feud led to war and then violence and they became a victim of it so we have to be careful because we'll have people on the side of the map Changing their destination for their next vacation. Like, yo, I'm not going to Jamaica. That's the They killing us down there. That's the second one for the month, girl. Let's go to Mexico. Let's go here. Let's go there. But I'm not going there. I wanted to go, but it don't look safe. So we got to be careful how we put this out there. See? The Clarendon police are now continuing their probe into the murder of this Jamaican-Canadian man whose body was found with gunshot wounds in the bushes in Salt River, Clarendon on Tuesday. The deceased is 43-year-old Merrick Aries, otherwise called Owen. 
a resident of Paddington Terrace and St. Andrew in Ontario, Canada. Right. Uh, it said that his rental car was supposed to be returned on October 30th, which would be a couple of days from now, three days from now. And he's the co-owner of the restaurant is called the Diner's Corner. The Diner's Corner is a authentic Jamaican restaurant in Ontario, downtown Ontario, Canada. Now, tributes are flowing in. Somebody said, Owen, Owen the co-owner of the Diner's Corner in Ontario, was a good friend. He was a dear friend, one Facebook user said, who indicated that he was in disbelief that something so tragic had happened to this particular person. He said, Owen always embodied warmth and tranquility and a commitment to delivering exceptional service, a trait that he instilled in his dedicated staff. My heart goes out to his family and his friends, both near and far. A woman then commented and she said, I am in shock. I just met him at Black Obana. This year, such a beautiful soul he was. May he rest in peace, stolen from us. In a tribute on Facebook, one of Aries' friends, Neil Armstrong, said that Aries learned his culinary skills at Heart Institute. Trust in, in Above Rocks, St. Catherine, Jamaica. And he eventually migrated to Canada in 2000 that's 23 years ago owen was friendly he was calm and he believed in providing the best services to his customers that was what he shared with and that is what he expected from his staff that works at the restaurant he continued by saying we miss you owen we miss the conversations we miss the laughter we miss the sweet potato pudding nicely decorated and presented and your warm and hospitable presence inside the restaurant we hope that whoever took your life will be found and that it happens quickly oh what a distressful news what good my friend what good so i guess there are people talking good about him you know um it's sad that that happened to him it's always somebody that is progressive, productive, and I can probably bet my last dollar that the person that actually took his life is somebody who is non-progressive. I want to say non-progressive man about people who don't want to get up and go work, people who don't own no business anywhere, isn't even trying to be an entrepreneur since they'll look at you and say, well, no work, not about the place. Well, what are you trying to do for yourself? Well, government now do nothing for we. Well, what are you trying to do for you? Those are the people who always end up squeezing a trigger and taking away the life of somebody who is near and dear to many, who's done many good for many, who many people depend on still, and who's somebody who brings light to so many. It's just sad. That it happens that way. I can't speak on what exact situation caused him to lose his life. I can only just send my condolences as well. And as we know now, these things happen way too often that it's become a norm for us. For by people who live overseas, who are traveling to Jamaica, please be safe. Some of you romanticize Jamaica. Some of you think that Jamaica is the same Jamaica that you left back in the 1980s and in early 90s, and it's not so, especially if you haven't been back in a while, especially if you don't know the road, you're in a new place. This is a new time, and it requires for you to be extra vigilant and extra careful. I was saying this the other day, and somebody said, so Flo, that's why I don't go to Jamaica. Because I hear what you're saying, but everything I hear that you're saying is all precautions. There are other Caribbean islands that I go to. This is a woman that travels a lot. And she's probably been to every Caribbean island there is and other places around the world. She said, this is why 
She said, there are other places, other Caribbean islands that I go to, and I don't have to worry. I can go to Jamaica, and yes, it's beautiful, and yes, the vibe is good, but there's always that cloud of worry. I'm always worried when I'm out if anything is going to go wrong. I'm always worried if somebody is trailing me. I'm always worried if I'm going to be victimized. And it's just the worry that bothers me because I go to all these other places and I don't have that worry. I'm out late night walking street by myself or me and one girlfriend. And I'm here and I'm there and I'm everywhere and we don't need no security and nobody bothers us and all this. Vicky Victory says, you know, men features are slowly changing with some having the looks of a woman. Vicky, where you come from with that? <laughs> oh, God. Nanya Harmony says, my sincere condolences to Owen's family. Diner's Corner has been one of my favorite restaurants in Toronto. Article food and vibes. Hmm. Shout out to Nanya Harmony. And I see other Canadian people are saying the same thing. As it said, it's a well-established business. It's very popular. And you know how people look on that too. Yo, them people that own big restaurant foreign, you know, make whole heap of money. You could be a target. You can't just move wrong willy-nilly. And I'm going to give you one piece of last warning before I go off into our next topic. Uh, the world is not as big as you think it is. I talk stuff about people before and walk past them and see them in the airport. But lucky me never said nothing bad. I was just talking the truth or just talking what I knew from sources that were connected to them. Not going to call any names, but a particular famous individual's child's mother who everybody knows that it's his child's mother. She contacted me, him, and he's, he tells everybody that's his child. We're not guessing. She contacted me and gave a whole story one time, right? How he's a deadbeat dad, and he's from a very prominent family, and they have money and all this other stuff. He don't care about him youth. Him youth's getting older. He's youth begging for his presence, all this other stuff. So I covered that story and because she gave me permission to do it. And I asked her, why you want me to do it? It's just for boss him out or something. And she was like, yeah, because, um, come on, man. He goes around pretending like, you know, it's love and peace and harmony and man must stand up and be responsible and all this. And underneath it all, he is none of that. So I bust out the story. Lo and behold, about two weeks, not even two weeks, about two, three days later, I had to travel. So I think I was leaving. I was, I was in Miami. I was in Miami flying to Jamaica. And this person just got off a plane and came through the terminal. And the tour away meet in the terminal and buck. And him look for me, sir. And me look for him, sir. And him did have a bunch of people with him. And me never have nobody with me. And I looked, I looked for him. And it took a minute to click. But I saw everybody else around him because they're a well-known set of people. I saw everybody else around him and Mr. Ross. Oh, okay. So the, the whole clan is here kind of thing. And I got a hard stare down. I'm going to stand up and stare back. But I thought to myself how quickly things could have gone wrong. I say that to say this. The world is small. So nobody feel like say, oh, you're over far and I do good and nobody in Jamaica don't know. Right? The world is small. Sometimes you go to some places in the U.S. where you conduct business and you have to leave all your personal information and stuff. And guess who is the person, the secretary or the person, who, the teller or the person who is receiving all your info? Them work at the place. Could be the bank, could be the airport, could be the, the they're Jamaican too. And them know you or know them know your business and them work at a place. So the world the world is small. Most of the scamming stuff will go on and they get a hold of people's personal information. How y'all think that happened? A lot of the times it's from Jamaicans that are working overseas in many different places. In a the bank as a teller, in a the supermarket, grocery store, in a wherever you can name it where you conduct business, they're there. And them in the hospitals, 
their CNAs and nurses and even doctors and it in law enforcement in all walks we're here. And just like that, all your information. Send this call. Give me scammer bridging. And before you know it, you're getting scammed. So the world is small. You have to be careful. So when you go to Jamaica, don't go. I'm not saying go and be paranoid, but be careful. Be careful. Don't go willy-nilly and thinking, oh, me have US dollars, so me can go lure somebody in and spend like a money upon that galia because no, she look broke, but she's sexy. I'm a want her. That's what someone on the man do. She's sexy, I'm a want her. Cause enough of the girl, them licky licky too, you know. You're flying from foreign, them no business, young or old, as long as you come in from foreign and you have money and you look like you will give it, they'll come. Especially the little one them will call themselves Dolly. And I'm telling you, it might be exciting for you, but you might be getting lowered. So when girl tell us that we are go over here so and hotel or meet me there or come pick me up here, you might go pick up gunshot from some gunman. Just saying. Be careful out there. Same thing for the women. Y'all meeting guys online and you exchange pictures. You know, you send your little pum pum pic because you have been talking for a while. And them send him dick pic and you say, Jesus Christ, a banana day, long till it bend. Shoo, you fly into Jamaica. I have to feel it in a real life. And you don't make it back to America or to Canada or to England or to wherever. Y'all just be careful. All right. What if he was taken out because he is a competition? Hey, Rush Jada. Absolutely. I'm not relating that to his case because I don't know why. I'm just saying that these things happen and you don't know why. But there are a million reasons why it could have happened. We'll hear later as things come out if everything comes out it could be anything we could get cynical we can get deep with this we can say well maybe you and your brother own the restaurant and the restaurant is doing very well um is there an insurance policy out on your life that links to the restaurant your brother can cash out on that in the event of your death and become sole owner of the business instead of having to share 50 50 with you it could be i mean i could go on for days about theories about what could have happened we don't know the truth is we do not know but i hope that law enforcement in jamaica leaves no stones unturned and they actually find out what happened to the brother so his family can get some peace and if his brother saw this just now that was just me saying that we could theorize. I'm not saying you did anything. I'm not accusing you of anything. I just taught me a talk. And I said, since we don't know, we can't make up anything. Because it could be anything until they find out actually what it really is that took place. Right? Right. So with that said, be careful. Be very careful. Me move like power people. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not trying to tell you to move like a power person. But me move like power people everywhere not just in jamaica in jamaica i'm actually a bit more relaxed than my day-to-day -day here in the u.s uh to be honest with you uh, i think i let my guard down a lot in jamaica i don't know why my spirit just feels i'm a spiritual person so i move off of spirit if something that guides me where here stand up i'm mean, gonna no, say something all right you know skin crawl i'm mean, gonna no, say something all right take care yourself that kind of stuff. So, and I listen. I listen to that inner, whatever guidance that is. Any man who say of pum pum pick, fame is suing. For me, is suing. You pass them out. You know what? Funny we should say that because a brother yesterday, I think, got convicted. Not convicted, but the, the ruling came down in a case. So, a Jamaican man and his lover then break up. And she was one of those, you know, them exchange pictures. She used to skin it out and flick it up and send it go game and stuff. And when they broke up, he sent out all the pics. She was doing the things them. Yeah. And him, him uh, she, don't picture me, man. No, no, take no picture of me. And he's like, move your hand, babe, man. This is for me and you. Yeah. And then you, you go all pro upon him now because you think uh, this is your honey bone for you and him. See her there with the something in her mouth. Turn around the way to be up. Skin it up. See her there with the something there. So he ended up taking those pictures and releasing them to the public, right? And they traced it back to him for sure. Well, 
yesterday he was ordered to pay a restitution fee of five hundred thousand dollars, and I don't know how much time. I don't even think he got any time in jail or anything like that, though. But he was ordered to pay a restitution fee of five hundred dollars. Now, in the grand scheme of things, five hundred thousand dollars is half a million dollars. Half a million Jamaican dollars is probably about four thousand US. Right, so it, it ain't really something big, but it's something big if you don't have it. With that said, the headline said, people who release revenge porn will be punished from now on. I know in the U.S., in some places, you're going to prison for it now. So you can't take your girlfriend, old pictures, and our old lick body pictures, and release them to the public. <laughs> To the public, because if they trace it back to you, you go into prison. Live on the air with SoFlo. Good morning. Yes, SoFlo. Just send a picture on WhatsApp. Hold on there. You, 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 you think I break up? We can't hear you. Can you just send a picture of the guy who that talk was on the restaurant in the front room. Mm -hmm. Just look on the page and uh, repost it. All right. All right. The name of the page. Yeah. All right, my brother. Will do. All right. Yeah. Chat room be bubbling. It be everything in that chat room over there. I know a lot of you in there be passing stuff up. That's why I'm going to find them and put them back in there. But usually if anything happens, that's exactly how we get all the stuff that we get. I'll post it when, when this chat is, when this live done. I'll go post it in the chat room for the people that are in the chat room. Them can see it. Don't ask me to get in the chat room. The chat room is crowded. It's been crowded, full to capacity for a while now. And nobody ain't leaving. And they've formed like a whole community over there as well. So big up to the chat room. I should be tuning into it sometime this morning myself. Let's pause through and say hi. Um, yeah. So, e e lesson of the day. Don't make no boy tell you about... Yeah, but put it in your mouth, man. Hold it, hold it right this a bit. I know your husband. And somehow, no, every man we want to meet on a flick it up for. So you have like 10 men out there because you change relationship regularly. So over the years, you probably have like 10, 15 men out there We have pictures of you. So I could have anybody do it to you and you don't know as who, right? When you see yourself floating out there on video or pictures online and stuff like that. So be careful. Who you do them things there for? Big up to Miss Kitty. That's why Miss Kitty said it's not everything you can give to just any man. Him not forget everything. Some things did for save for husband, right? Now, if it was your husband at one point and then in a breakup, then that's very distasteful of him if you want to go share anything and the crowd ain't going to buy it. But if you have a bugger man out there that you always do this for, I did it for John when I was dating John and me and John break up. Then me and Tom was together. Then I did it for Tom too. And me and Tom break up and me and Steve was together. And I used to flick it up and skin it out and send it to Steve too. And then me and Steve break up. And then about 2021, me and Russian start dating. And me do it for Russian too. You see how that gone already? Our five, six, seven, eight, everybody have pictures of you out there with your body skin out and your, and your pum pum wide out. Don't do it. Just don't do it. How about that? Make them see it in person. And that's it. Save something. <laughs> Save something. I shouldn't even talk like that because me want my wife to do it. And I'm not going anywhere. I promise. And if I do, I'm not sharing because I'm not that type. But may I tell Uno say Uno can't trust nobody. Boyfriend, a boyfriend. Yo, let's get into, we have the witness recanting their statement in the Beach Store trial. I told you, his lawyer's going to eat this case up. I'm of the belief now that there's a very big possibility that Beach Store could walk away from this case. We still have the guilty plea of two people now in the whole Philip Paulwell situation. We'll talk about that too. Um, let's get into the Dwight Howard story. I don't want to assault your ears this morning. But we're going to get into it. So, I don't know if y'all know Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard is NBA all-star player, 
played at a very high level. You know, Dwight Howard played at a very high level, see, in the NBA for quite a few years. He now plays overseas. There was an incident that happened. This was 2015. And in 2015, when this incident happened, I said, I said something wrong. Something very off with that brother here. Let me show you what happened in 2015. Because somebody posted it again yesterday. Right? Do y'all remember this? Watch closely. Y'all remember that? That was 2015. This was at a basketball, a professional basketball, NBA basketball game that was being televised on national television. That's Dwight. Now, when Dwight did that in 2015, that's 2015, you know, we're not 20, that is what, eight years ago, something, we, we're in 2023. When he did that in 2015, I laughed my ass off. I said, um, okay, obviously, this dude swing that way, because not even in a joke. Me not see where with none of my brethren them, anything possible could have happened where that would have happened, or we would have ramp like this. Also, this is around the time where Dwight got phased out of the NBA. Now there were talks that that assault was an assault. It didn't look voluntary, but it was because of these types of behavior and the man's ferocious appetite for man booty. That, um, you know, they decided, like, uh, the locker room is pretty uncomfortable, coach, kind of thing. I saw a video the other day of some more group of athletes doing the same thing. One had the other one upon a bed with him legs in the ear, and he's saying, about this is his strokes, and he's showing, his, showing off his strokes. And I thought, duh, can't be just playing that like that. Same situation right here. Some people are of the impression that if you are a professional athlete and you're a man and you're big and tall and tough and strong, come on now. To be a professional athlete, you have to be above the normal population of people. You are a part of like 1%, 2% of the whole population because them can run for miles with some mass on them face and um, they can do all kind of stuff. They lift heavier weights than you. They're stronger than you. They're faster than you. Them this, that, and the other. They are trained in that manner, right? The healthiest of the healthiest and all this. People think, okay, those kind of men can't be gay. And it's not true. Gay comes in all forms, right? I mean, I was kind of shocked when I learned that the first time I learned that too. Because I was under the impression growing up too that if ever a man was into that type of stuff, you would be able to see it a mile from a mile away. As you get older and you learn people and life, you realize that's not so. Some of the, hey man, hey yo, what's up? Hey y'all good? Yeah, homie. All right, man. Hey, what we doing later? You good? You coming? All right, bet. We fall through. See you then. Man, close doors. Is, Ooh, ah, mm, e. Like they might, they, they'll even assume the position of the girl in in the relationship. So you, you you learn different things as you grow. Now, with that said, Dwight Howard now is currently there's a a lawsuit out against him, right? And he has denied any accusations by this Georgia man who says that he was sexually assaulted by. Dwight Howard and another person. His name is Stephen Harper. And I went and looked up Stephen Harper's profile and his pictures and everything. And yeah, 
Stephen Harper filed a civil lawsuit against Howard in July, alleging that assault and battery took place and false imprisonment took place and intentional infliction of emotional distress took place. No criminal charges have been filed against Howard so far, but it's making its rounds in the U.S. media and it's trending. In a response that was filed this week by his attorneys, Dwight Howard described the 2021 encounter at his home in Atlanta, in the suburbs, Atlanta, in the su Atlanta, in the suburbs as consensual and requested that the case be dismissed. He said it went down. But it was consensual. Now, I saw him do an interview last night. And in the interview last night, the interviewer is asking him, I don't give a damn, man. I don't really care. But the, the, the crowd want to know. The audience want to know. Are you gay? And Dwight was like, that's none of anybody's business. Why would you even ask that? Now, I would ask the same thing too. Because if you read, it says through his attorney that him and the man met up at his house, his mansion in Atlanta, and consensual adult activities took place. Dwight was married at one point and, had a, and has a son from that relationship yeah so one time he looked the traditional part like successful young man with a wife and child a child and all along those videos like the 2015 video was happening harper's lawsuit says that he met dwight howard through instagram a lot of booty exchanging going on on instagram they sliding in your girl's dm She's sliding in her favorite man's DM. You know, there's a lot of sliding in DM and meeting up and cheating going on. Why the world changing? You know, Boosie said, social media done turned us all into hoes, man. <laughs> and I had to laugh, right? He said, social media done turned all us into hoes, man. Because check it. Back in the day, right? Didn't nobody know that your girl had a birthmark right next to her coochie. Nobody knew that. But now she out here saying she doing her social media thing. She put on a skimpiest bathing suit. She turned around. Her big ass done ate up the whole bathing suit. Now they know she got a little birthmark that's shaped like Africa on her left cheek and all this. But back in the day when we didn't have social media, nobody knew that stuff. The only people who knew that about you was somebody who got that close to you. So nowadays... Everything is out in the open and everything is available. So it's like no matter how much you have at home that's good, you there here you go. Damn. Ooh, wee. Ooh. My God. That one bad. You know that that's now. And then your partner see you coming and they like this. Yeah? Oh, nothing? <laughs> everybody everybody out here, everybody out here lusting 24-7 now. Everything is available now. They should have just kept the phone at, um, remember when we had the phones that you could dial and get what you needed to get, but you couldn't, like, send pictures back and forth, and it didn't have all this Instagram 24-7 where people can just post them live and dress up and put on them best this and that. A girl could have suffer like dog. All she had to do is go take a shower, clean herself up, lotion up her body real good. If she have a nice shape, put on something skimpy. One million followers by a morning. That kind of stuff, right? Catch one ass cheek on the sink in the bathroom. Do a little pose, let down her hair. Holy heap of man in our DM. I want to fly you out. I want to take you to here and there. Suddenly she got trips coming her way. She like... I'm one of them girls you got to pay for. Conversation start. Money exchange quick. Hear him. Kind of smash. Money is no option. It's, it's no It's no problem. What's up? She like, 
Send me two hundred and fifty dollars. Bet. What's your What's your app? Cash app. Boom. There it is. Not an issue. You coming or not? We in Miami this weekend. Angela Paco Pango. Flying around the world now, doing all kind of things just because. So you see the world change, right? Anyhow, back to this. Harper's lawsuit says that he met with Dwight Howard on Instagram first. And then they, over time, they kept on talking to each other. And then they exchanged explicit text messages and photos. And then they arranged to meet at Howard's home in July 19th of 2021. While on my way to the Gwinnett County residence, Harper says that Howard texted him and asked him if another man or woman could join their planned encounter. Harper says he told Howard that he was not interested. I don't want no threesome. I just want you. Once at Howard's house, Harper claimed that they were joined by a man that jumped out of the closet out of nowhere. Another ninja dressed in a wig and looking like he dressed up as a woman and identified himself only as Kitty. Kitty, arr, I'm here. Arr. And he's like, I don't want to play. I don't want to, I'm not, I told do I, I'm not in it. I, I, that's what he said. He said he, he, got, he got blindsided and surprised by Another ninja jumped out dressed up as a woman. Big, you see that money? That money like almost seven feet tall, you know, like 300 or something pound, you know. <laughs> you got all this wig and everything. He's like, in cabin, got meow. It's just it's a big lion. It's a big <laughs> come jump out. Oh, I said, I don't want to play no more. I don't want to be a part of this. That's what he said. He said, he claimed that the man jumped out dressed as a woman identified only as Kitty. Harper says that he tried to resist the two men because at this point, they both were on him. And he couldn't get away. And they forced him to do the things and all kinds of things. Mr. Harper was trapped in the defendant's bedroom and believed that he could suffer imminent bodily harm if he resisted these sexual advances, is what the lawsuit says. Afterwards, when everything was done, when they were done, kitty pieing him up and ravishing him, scratches and scrapes everywhere, Mr. Harper says he felt extremely violated and humiliated and was left there frozen in complete shock. Dwight Howard now, he denies these allegations. Dwight said, the three men agree. Let, hold up, hold up. Come, me don't have money for them people that come sue me. According to AP News, Howard denied the allegations in his response, which says that the three men agreed. His response says the three men agreed to engage in a consensual activity. Three man. He asked. He a <laughs> he asked for a summary judgment, which court costs and attorney fees to be assessed against Harper. In other words, he said. You making me pay lawyer fees for this, right? After you agreed to this, and you know what I'm saying, we broke your back in there. You you coming back now, making me do lawyer fees? I need an assessment of all this is gonna cost, cause I don't know if he's gonna counter sue and make him pay the lawyer fees and whatnot. So the Associated Press does not typically identify people who say that they have been victims of sexual assault unless they have agreed to be named publicly, right? Well, they keep on mentioning his name, so obviously he agreed to be named publicly. Not only that, he is out there on many others. Y'all can go look him up when all this is done. Harper reported that the alleged assault to the Gwinnett County Police earlier the year later. On July 15th of 2022, 
after the initial report, the police tried to schedule a time to meet with him to come in for a formal interview, according to a police incident report. After making several attempts to meet with him, the detectives suspended the case because of a lack of participation from the alleged victim. In other words, he went and complained to the police, but he did not follow it up. The police was trying to get in touch with him. Hey, what's going on? We need to sit and talk. You put out some allegations against somebody, and these are pretty serious allegations. Are you going to pursue this or whatever? So he kept ducking the police. They couldn't find him. The 37-year-old Dwight Howard was an eight-time all-star. That's what I'm telling y'all. He played at a very high level. If you follow basketball and don't know who Dwight Howard is, you never followed basketball. Everybody knows who Dwight Howard is. He is an eight-time all-star, three-time defensive player of the year, and one of the NBA's most dominant centers during the prime of his 18 years professional career. This brother is only 37 and he played 18 years in the NBA, getting NBA money. And then went over to overseas and he's still playing professional ball in, I believe it's Taiwan or Japan or one of those places um, in their pro league, which pays a lot of money also. I looked it up this morning. This could very well be a money grab. Dwight Howard's net worth as of uh, August 2023 is $140 million. So he's a man that's in the money. He, he, I don't know. I don't know if this is a money grab or if this is, but I'm, I'm not going to be the judge of all that because I'm not the judge. I'm just putting the story out there that for those of us who used to hear it back in the day, especially like 2015, after he did that grab crotch at something, and then he disappeared, we were thinking something must have happened behind the scenes, and they let him go. Somebody probably pulled him in and said, hey, this is primetime television. Kids are watching you. You, kids are watching you. You're Dwight Howard. You just grabbed crotch. On, like what Donald Trump said in the election, you know, grab her by the pussy. You just grab the man by his nuts on TV. How do we get past this? I don't know. But he ended up not being there anymore. And then now he's overseas. And then these allegations are now out by a man that says that this happened to him. And Howard said it did happen. He didn't say it didn't happen. He said it did happen. But it was consensual. So how come now you coming back for money? I believe he was trying to extort. There's more to the story. Like he was trying to extort some money from him and they were staying in touch. But Dwight Howard ended up blocking him on Instagram after the extortion attempts started. And when he blocked him, that's when he went and made because he he made the report like a year later after the, after they got together. But the fact that he never denied it happened, he said it did happen. It was three of us in there, and it did happen. <clears throat> oh, my God. You know, I'm not passing no judgment. It's 2023. It's the worst time for you to pass judgment. This ain't back in the day. When you're there dancing on your ear, if you're there, well, I want to put you on another ear, so we can't do that again. Canceled immediately. So, and and I'm the type of person like this. I don't really care. I don't want to see. I don't even want to hear. But when it comes to the public, and it's broadcasted for all to see and hear, I'm gonna come share it with y'all because I don't want to bear this by myself. This is just too much. Dwight, you were one of my favorite basketball players, man. Yeah, especially when you were in Orlando. But that's it. It takes nothing away from that. You're still one of my favorite ball players. I just didn't know. You know, I didn't know. But now we know. So for a dog, you get my email. 
Vicky, no, Vicky, I haven't checked the email yet. They didn't pay him for the roundabout. God have mercy. Boy got sent to Pound Town. Broke off your back in there. I never get a penny. He's probably looking back like 140 million. Even if I make a false accusation, they will pay to have that go away. Do y'all know that? That that's an actual okay. So for some of you out here, right, who they are, are rising the ranks in life, listen. Somebody will go and make a false statement against you and put out a lawsuit against you if you ever had any interaction with them. And then the goal is not to win a case because most people will settle out of court. So the lawsuit might say, I'm suing for $10 million. You come out though, they want you to come out and say, okay, listen, to drag this through court and possibly my family getting involved and the media and all this other stuff. Let's do it like this. I'll give you 250000 up front. You sign this NDA and we make this go away, man. Because, you know, this is bothering my family. This is bothering, you know, my career is in jeopardy right now, whatever. And they go, okay. Sign. 250k cash. Out of there. I not, never got so in that first place. So we don't know what that is. Sir Palmer, thank you. I appreciate you very much. Sir Palmer says, off topic, you did a story on this in 2018. The title of the video, this drama deserves a Hollywood movie script. Three men, one love. While searching for properties, I seen the property, 10 bed, 10 bathroom for sale, 290K, a steal, would you purchase? Hmm. Sir Palmer, you have me lost. You have me lost. Uh, if it was 2018, boy, I forgot. Because we've covered so many stories over the years. So Flo, no read typo, you know. Oh, way yeah, I talk about no, Vicky. He never lived up to his talent. Jesus Christ. Where said the man go and get disappointed? Live to Erka TV. Say, I wonder how the man will feel in the locker room now all this time if they didn't know. I don't know. The same way how we feel in the army, especially when we find out. Listen. Okay, so I was in the army, right? I was in the infantry, like y'all know by now. And while I was there, there were those guys. That were, you can hear them late night when everybody's supposed to be down, you in the bunk, in the barracks, you you racked out because you tired, long day of training, you, you can't, because we sleep light, you know, you go like this in the middle of the night, you could see them two creeping off to the shower area, late night, me just close my eye like this, mind my business, don't say nothing, I remember one day I'm showering, and me look over, this brother has stare upon me, I don't know if I turn back our front or our side, him turning back, give me. And I remember seeing two birds. <laughs> I remember seeing two birds tattooed by the man about to cheek them. And I was like, oh my God. I was, <laughs> I was like, oh my God. This is the army. This is the infantry, right? If you're talking about ranger life, if you're talking about uh, shoot them up, bang, bang shit, this is them. And I, I and I was surprised. And at them, see them one missing. One night, I see the man that must sneak off to the shower, and I was like, oh, shit. So it is real. So we'll talk amongst ourselves who we think is. There's another one in there. We used to call him Priscilla, but his name was, I'm not going to say his name. I won't even do that. Uh, but his, his name was close to Priscilla, but we switched his name over to Priscilla. Him used to be in the shower, like, and he was the oldest one out of everybody, like, Whatever the age limit is before you, the army can say, no, you can't come in because you're too old. That's whatever age he was when he just joined the army. Him joined the army with a whole heap of gray hair. Just look like somebody's uh, grown dad that's about to be granddad. Him joined them ageless. Now, the rest of us, we, <laughs> we in the shower. This man used to come in the shower and be like this.
Uh, everybody want to fight him. Because <laughs> he, he took his showers in slow motion and he used to watch you while he taking his shower. He rubbing himself down slow. So we go in the shower, man. We used to bed. We used to go in the shower and bed in my drawers, right? I'm bathing in my drawers. I keep my drawers on until the last end. And the last end now, when you're done being everything, you take off the drawers them real quick. And shup, 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 wash them out, ring them out, cover your front, turn around him. All right, come out. If you ever, and when you line up to go in, you will hear them say, not to butt, not to butt, not to butt, not to butt. Remember, I said, me a Jamaican, you know. Me in there here, not to butt. I me I say, why for that? Because we're not to do with butt. And the, it means tighten up the line. That means the line's supposed to be so tight. This is the shower line, especially on deployment or field exercises. Not to butt, not to butt. Man, body, I respire your butt to cheek them. Not to butt, not to butt, not to butt, go in the shower. Everybody is trying to go back to the back of the line or go around. Nobody know I'm being first no more. If Priscilla was in the line, everybody, the line, that's a peel off like banana, go around. So we're like, man, get in the shower and shower so we could go, man. You go, you go, you and him go. People come out the shower and be like, that's why the fuck y'all didn't want to go in there. Why didn't y'all say something? <laughs> why didn't y'all say something? And he didn't care. Yeah. So they exist all over, man. And hey, more power to them. Um, you know, I mean, you know, I want a different lane, but it, it it's in, in every environment. It's in every environment. Can't escape it. <laughs> Woo I think they're just trying to shake Dwight Howard down, though, for some money. With that Dwight Howard part said, though, just remember again, people, December 22nd, 2023, Morant Bay, St. Thomas, um, Unruly Fest, Popcorn and Friends concert in Jamaica. It's December 2023. If you've never been to Jamaica during Christmas to New Year season, then you need to go there because Jamaica is festive this time of year. I can't explain to you how festive Jamaica is. It's a vibe. It's a different vibe. And these are one of the concerts that's going to be happening around that time there. You can get your tickets, uh, early bird tickets at www.officialpopcorn.com. General admission is 4,000 Jamaican dollars. That's about 30 US dollars. And VIP is 8,000 Jamaican dollars. But don't worry, that's only 55 US dollars. All right? I don't want to commit to it yet until you see you there. But... We're kind of looking in that direction right now still, right? With that said, let's get into another one this morning that we have. So on Thursday, remember I said something happened Tuesday in a Beachy Stout case where the judge, the Beachy Stout lawyers discovered that they had written testimonies. One was like 20 pages long, one was like six pages long that they had never seen before. So they caused a row during the trial while they were cross-examining the alleged hitman, and they realized that, hey, hold up, Your Honor, we weren't given this. So the judge said, this is just friggery and foolishness, man. The court is adjourned here. Y'all get that together tomorrow, which would be Thursday. We're not coming in here tomorrow. That give Uno time to get it together. So Friday, we'll go to court. Um, so Wednesday... They were supposed to get it together. So Thursday, they would go to court. And I told you, if they went to court on Thursday, then Friday, we would have new testimonies. Well, that didn't happen. No Thursday sitting for a Beachy Stout trial. This time, what happened? Juror was absent. So because one of the jurors were absent, they could not go forward yesterday. They had to postpone until another time. With that, a witness recants statement in Beachy Stout murder trial. Delvalin Minot, the same man, the same man who said him was hired to kill Tanya and him get peace at the Tun Tun 2 and all these things, the same man. The second of a long list of witnesses in the Everton Beachy Stout McDonald murder trial because there are way more witnesses that are supposed to be called that are supposed to come testify against Beachy. He's the second one. Went back on his word on Tuesday in the home circuit court, Kingston, 
proclaiming that he had lied about the number of times that he went to Tanya McDonald's home in Dolphin Bay, Portland to have her killed. Now, see, he can't read, so he don't know what them put in at the statement, but when they were reading the statement back to him, him recognized that things that were read to him were not things he said to the police, but him never said anything about it. And because him can't read, he couldn't figure out what else was written in there that was not what he said, but him just signed it anyway because I saw him do him just sign things because him can't read. And then the fact that he got mixed up as to if or when he met her and all this other stuff, and was it you who worked there or was it your son that got a job there or did he tell you on the first day he met you that he wanted you to kill his wife when all you did was come for a work or he might get him whole story that mix up. The fact that he has gotten all his story mixed up so far and then now come back to say, I lied, is not so it really did go. Again, this guy was supposed to be the most credible witness. He was supposed to be the big ten penny nail driven into the coffin for this case. So the fact that he's getting picked apart this much, everybody else after this is probably going to come down to a hearsay. Unless they have proof that whatever they're coming to say, see the picture here, see the video here, see Mr. Beach is out there, him do it. Unless it's that, the other, all the rest of this is going to be mounting to nothing but character assassination by whoever for his attorneys. Just more stuff for them to pick apart. Vicky says, you men can't tande. You're all about to stop getting shine. Just wait until the women say we are converted. We don't blow no more. Just wait. I'm going to try to convince them and give them reason. Vicky. Tanya was eventually murdered on July 20th of 2022. And you all know how she was found and stabbed multiple times and coat, throat cut and body set on fire and all that. They always start the articles out like that. The man says, I never went to the house with Mr. Barnes on four occasions. This is what he said before. I went to the house with Mr. Barnes on four occasions. Live through Erica TV. Tell Vicky to behave herself, please. I the man said before that he went to the house on four occasions. Now he's saying, I never went to the house with Mr. Barnes on four occasions. We went there on three occasions. The fourth time was the time to kill her. But before he said we went there four times to kill her. We drove to Sherwood Forest. Mrs. Mack, she was the one who drove her car. I met her in Port Antonio, Portland. I never met, I never went to her house at all that day. Mr. Minot told the presiding judge, Chester Stamp, the jury, defense attorney, and prosecutors. He said that. He had made a mistake when he said that he went to the house with Barnes. Barnes is the person who he said actually did the killing. And he stood and watched him do it because he instructed him on how to do it. So he had to make sure that it was done how the big man said he wanted it done, right? Stab her up in our chest multiple times, cut her throat, burn her up in the car, all kind of something like that. So... He said he had made a mistake before. Misspoke. That's not what really happened. When he said he went to house with Barnes four times and not three times. In reference to the number of times he went there. Allegedly under pressure from Beachy Stout to kill the woman. It was not long after Minot made those pronouncements that the trial encountered a sudden twist. The trial run into a stumbling block after defense attorney Christopher Townsend discovered a series of serious issues with the disclosure of statement in the case. Townsend is just one of the four attorneys at laws that are representing Beachy Stout. 
he came across a statement which was allegedly given by a current witness, Delvalin Minot, that the defense team had no clue about. Now, while Townsend cross-examined the witness, the attorney read a statement that was very unfamiliar and immediately pointed to the problem that, hey, judge, I don't know where this is coming from because we've never seen this before. And if this is in this case, it should have been given to us already. We have observed a serious disclosure issue. There are two written statements concerning this particular witness that I'm studying that were never served to us. The first is five pages long, and the second one is 16 pages long, and it's handwritten. They relate to this case significantly. Now, I said already, I'll say it again. I don't know who sit down and write 16 pages long. And it's handwritten. According to the prosecutor, Sophia Rowe, we have been serving certain documents ongoing, piece by piece. I am just as surprised as my friend is to know that they were not served, Your Honor. We have served everything we had on file about two weeks ago. Townsend was quick to point out that the defense team was at no point made aware of the statements. Judge Stamp subsequently scolded the prosecution. The prosecution gets scolded by the judge. He says this is an extraordinary shocking development. This is the kind of disclosure that should result in a sanction. But I can't see any course of action that will be in the interest of justice right now. Townsend told the court that as he has pursued the documents and said that it contains very significant information which could have been used to advance their case and they weren't made aware of it. Justice Stamp asked the witness how many statements in total he gave to the police and he said he gave them three. The matter was stood down to give time for all the parties involved to go through the documents, make sure everybody is on point and come back to court. Now, Justice Stamp, while addressing the seven-member jury, the seven-member jury they have now comprises of three women and four men. The judge said, the parties involved will need time to review material before the trial can continue. It is a complicated matter and checks have to be made. I'm going to ask you to return on Thursday at 2 p.m. Well, Thursday at 2 p.m., one of the jurors did not show up, so they could not continue the case. Everybody had to go home. Friday, today, they are back in court again. And we all know what Beach Stout is on trial for. And according to the witness who is testifying now, Beach gave him $3 million to kill his wife or was to give him. He promised him $3 million to kill his wife, who he accused of cheating on him with a policeman and robbing his business of $30 million from his business account, and overall, destroying his name and his reputation in the streets. Have man a laugh of time, call them all in him house. I cock her up and, you know me, I say, and deal with the thing these kind of ways, and you're my wife. They're laughing at me, and it hurt him. The witness claimed that he couldn't carry out the hit himself. As a result of that, he subcontracted Barnes to do the killing. Minot is currently serving a 10-year prison sentence for being the contractor in the murder. He got 19 years, but he only has to do 10, and then he will be given his parole papers, if you will. So he could be out in 10 years. Um, like I said before, and I keep saying now, until I start hearing the other testimonies, this is subject to change. You don't know what else is coming. The prosecution won't show their whole hand up front. We have to go see what come out of the case. But from what I've heard so far, this man could very well beat this, walk from this, somehow. Right? All of a sudden, him have dementia, right, Vicky? All of a sudden, him have dementia. I don't know if somebody reach him behind bars and say, yo, you better fling with a case. I hear that. Because Mironia do 50 already. And them don't contact me. I said, boom, bang, bang. And hey, boy. 
it could get that way. If somebody reaching behind bars and say, yo, man, stop your pronoun, you know, boy. So when you go to court, you better make sure so the big man walk. You hear that? That means so you're going to go get amnesia. You don't remember nothing. You can't read nothing. How can they prove that he can't read? How can they prove that he cannot read? This is how you get all the frigid testimonies thrown out. All the big statements where you get from beginning that was supposed to be the nail in the coffin. This is how you get it thrown out. I can't read. Me just talk, 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 and the police write, 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 and one of the statements, them six pages long, you're on, and the next one is 16 pages long, and it's all handwritten. And when them did I read it back to me, that's this is the nail in the coffin right here. When they were reading it back to me, I realized that they were reading stuff that I never said to them. <laughs> Done. But I don't know what else in there I didn't say because it's 16 pages long. I remember saying, I can't read. Who is sitting in front of you for you to read 16 pages to them? Me lose focus a long time. Right? Right. So the fact that he came in there and said, that makes that is going to make all that stuff he said before. That That's not credible material. They need him to say, I'm standing on my word. That's what I said. That's what happened. That's why I tell for myself, because I'm guilty too. This is why we're in this. That's what he should be saying. That's not what he's saying. He is saying, I remember telling them somebody something went in that. I never said so. Yeah, I said that part, but I never said that. Yeah, I said three, I never said four. Yeah, I said... Wednesday, me never say Friday. Yeah, me say up, me never say down. Okay, what part of this, sir, is good and what part isn't? I don't know, sir. I can't read. <laughs> me just, but you signed it. Yes, sir, because um, true, me can't read. Me just sign paper when them say they sign it. That's not, that's not good. That's at, at all. That's not good. So, yeah. Big man probably just chilling. Probably just chilling, just biting time and just plotting. See how we're gonna come out of this. I remember how Jamaica run to you know. It ain't hard to get somebody to get to him. It's not like he is at so it's not like he is not on the island and he is in some other prison over so. British Jamaica girl says falling apart big time. It is. Big time. This is the main witness. This is the star witness. This Anybody who testify after this pertaining to Tanya's death, them are extra. Them are testify about other things just for build character. They're probably going to come in and say, yeah, your honor, I know about four more people when kill. Honestly, the man is devious. The man is this. I him send man come kill me one time and me escape. I him do this one time me and him was friend. All that is just exactly BM. All that is going to be looked at as just hearsay. Because you can go to court and say all you want to say. The judge will make you talk for the whole day and then they'll do like this. Hand over the proof. Oh, you don't have no proof. Well, damn, so Flo, you tell a compelling story, man, but... You know, I'm nothing for back it up. No picture, no recording, no, no nothing. Not that no little drop of blood where could have said DNA lead back to nothing. Okay, then. Hearsay. His lawyers get up in one sentence and say, Your Honor, I move to have all that striped as hearsay. Shoops, gone. <laughs> it, that easy. That easy. Why wasn't that statement recorded? Why wasn't the damn statement recorded on a recorder, right? Why wasn't the damn statement typed on a laptop and then printed out and multiple copies made, right? Why was the statement handwritten for 16 pages long? And this was 2020, three years ago. Crazy. Crazy, crazy. But this is where it's at with the Beach Stout case.
Now, if you want to, please remember this. Two things. One, have no dog in a fight. We're watching as it unfolds, and that's it. Two, it doesn't look like it's going to end like how we thought it was going to end. I couldn't see it before. I see it clearly now. And every time they cross-examine this man further, I see it more clearly now. Bitch, you probably in I'm cell right now, I sing Jimmy Cliff. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Soon they're back on the beach again. We soon come here. I can see all obstacles in my way. <laughs> my get ready if you come out. If I get ready to come out. Well, I remember, I know, the man that he said actually did the killing, if him did flip and it matched uh, Bobla's story, Bobla said me hire him. Him say yes, him did hire me. Bobla said him kill the person I me watch. Him say yes, me kill her and him did watch for true. That would have sink, Beachy. But here what? That man they not answering nothing. And not only that, he was released on bail a long time ago. When the case started a couple of weeks ago, his bail was uh, revoked and he was brought back into custody. And then a few days later, he was released on bail again. So as we speak right now, the person who is accused of as being the, the killer, the subcontracted killer, he's free. He even got married to an American woman um, during this time, after all this happened. So, brother, probably I'll uh, look for that Buster Casey and Flag of Iron any, any day now. Change my life. I'm moving to the U.S. or I'm moving to wherever she comes from. I was told she's from the U.S. I'm not sure. Or is it a Jamaican that went overseas and got naturalized and came back and then uh, married him? But the man can say, I don't know why I'm calling my name. I'm a hardworking man. So me, me married her, everything me get wife. Me, I'm, me not live them kind of life that you're on. We don't know. And them never get paid. I think they got paid what? Uh, 100000 or something? Well, whatever they got paid, it was only a small fraction of what they were supposed to get paid. And the man couldn't get the rest of the money. But he's the one who is not saying a word. So him have lawyer too. Beachy make sure him get lawyer too. Good lawyer too. Just like himself. Because they are now co-accused. 300,000? No. 3 million is what the jackpot was. They were supposed to get. They only got a fraction of the money. A little piece. Remember? Bubla got to court and tell the judge. Say, it looked like Bubla did free that him too. According to his testimony, because him say, the man did want him money. And the way how him tell the man, okay, stay right here, so I go over there, go check Mr. Um, Mr. Mac, McDonald for the money. And then he came back and he told him, the boss, no, they're there right now. So we have to go come back at the next time or meet him at the next location. And him said, the man looked upon him, up and down, and only said to him, I'm not going to tell you again. I want my money. When I make me do some things, I want my money. Or when I make me do some things what I'm not supposed to do, I want my money. And, him, and they asked him, did you ever meet with him again after that? And he said, no. So I'm thinking, I'm afraid him catch him afraid. Because you don't see the man handiwork. You say you couldn't do it. So you watch him do it, right? Now, suppose all this is true. I watch you gruesomely hangle the woman that I wear you. And now I can't get your money for pay you. And you look at me and you say, I'm not going to tell you again. I want my money. When you have me, I do some things I'm not supposed to do. I want my money. And walk away. I left him in an alley around a one place. Did you ever meet with him again? No. I sound like him catching free, right? I'm saying, you know what? Before that man killed me too, I got me I go tell the police. Eh? 
Ademan, uh, uh, Mr. 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 Beach is out. Um, hire me. I um, may hire him. You better me go tell everything from now before this backfire on me. All right. End of the day, it's all that you can prove in court, my friend. It's not what you say under the shade tree outside. And for that reason, I believe that Beachy Stout very much looks like he can walk from this. Ivan Wallace. Exactly. Only the alleged killer is out on bail. <laughs> Only the alleged killer is out on bail. Them said I'm afraid of Beachy. Them couldn't let him out on bail because he has a lot of money, right? And him have a lot of influence. So if he's out, it's nothing for him to say, yo, go clean up them ends there. Disappear the one day. Clean up a the corner there. By the time him go back a court for him case, it'll be, he'll be the only one standing in court. The judge will say, um, so who do you, the prosecution, have to call today? Them say, nobody, you're on a car. We can't find nobody. Case gets thrown out. So they kept him there with no bail, but they release the person who Bobla testifies, say, me watch him do it. I me instruct him based on how Mr. McDonald say him want it done. Remember how him tell we how Tanya fight till she all end up in the back seat with him? And she ball out. She said, my mother want me. My mother want me. Honestly, I don't believe same line. I don't. The lie couldn't so intricate. My mother want me. Well, she a fight. She fight from front seat to a back seat. Ten stabbing her chest. Ten. Cut her throat. Set her up on fire in the car. I don't think that's and his, his testimony describes to a T the crime scene. Like it all matches up. So I don't think he's lying. But that's not how court work. The law doesn't work based on what we think. It works based on what can be proven in a court of law. Enough, enough innocent people got prison because they probably had shady representation who could not properly show a clear way out for them and enough guilty people go free because they had the resources to hire proper representation who could make a way for them out of no way. That's just how the law works. Frigged up that it works that way, but it is what it is. See? Um, let's move on. After the beach stout thing, on our last topic for this morning, we're going to talk about the <laughs> Philip Paulwell case. And we keep saying Philip Paulwell case because he is kind of like the centerpiece in this case. Not that he did anything wrong, but he is the prominent politician who had two baby mothers and one end up killed the other one. Allegedly, flew into Jamaica, left her military post in the U.S., says she was stationed, from my research, she was stationed in Miami as a recruiter with a recruiter group. Recruiters recruit. And you don't get to become a recruiter just by regular. Oh, I'm going to join the Army. It's not a job in the Army. It's not an MOS. You can't sign up to be a recruiter. You have to be picked to be a recruiter. So that tells you that she was one of their stellar Sailors, because it's the Navy, right? Well, this morning I wake up. Last night before I went to bed, breaking news headline. One of the men in this case has pled guilty already. That was last night. By the time I wake up this morning, headline says another stunner. Second accused in the murder of Paul Wells daughter and her mom is today set to accept a plea deal and plead out as well. Yes, Kaitaja, you have to be selected. 
Yes, Vicky. They saw something great in her. And she was performing to the standards. A second man of three have been charged with murder of Philip Paulwell's 10-month-old daughter, Soraya, and her 27-year-old mother, Tashina Patterson, is expected to plead guilty to murder and kidnapping today in the Supreme Court. One already pled yesterday guilty. His plea will follow that of another man who on Thursday accepted a deal and pleaded guilty to murder and kidnapping in a double murder that shocked the country and triggered a parallel investigation by the United States Naval Criminal Investigative Services due to the fact that the U.S. Navy Culinary Specialist, that is her MOS, a culinary specialist, seaman Leota Bradshaw has been charged in the matter. So the Navy is the U.S. Navy is in this invest doing their own investigation as well, working alongside the Jamaican authorities. Yes, Kaitaja Empress, a cook. If you want to put it simply, a cook. I'll give enough credit to them. They do way more than cooking. Cause I don't know if you've ever been into like a Navy defect. A defect we call a defect is actually the chow hall. Is where you go to dine, right? On post. If you if you go in our army one. Still good. But when you go into a Navy defect, that defect is off the chain, boy. It's like five-star restaurant up in there. You go in there in the morning for breakfast. They do your omelet special made the way you want it done. They cracking real eggs for you. They cutting up. Yeah, let me get a little bit of skeleton in there. Let's put a little bit of this, a little bit of that. They flip up your omelets early in the morning with, I don't know, some five-star service. Right. A professional chef. Pastries and all these other things. They're getting ready to turn on her for sure. But this is what I believe before I go any further. I believe wholeheartedly that there should be no deal struck in this case. To think about the gruesomeness. Remember the, remember the voicemail that we listened to? Remember the details that came across? Like, you, y'all rest the gun upon the beer behead. And make the mother watch that. And blew out that baby head. And then forced her to watch that. Even while she was begging to take me instead. Don't do nothing to the baby. Please. You know the situation. But when you are begging for death. When you are begging. Please kill me instead. I want to do that to the baby. A 10 month old innocent baby. The sad part was how he said the baby, oh, the baby, the one who killed her, yeah, him, him said the baby did a play with him. Like him did I get to like the baby. The baby was jovial and happy. The baby don't know what's going on. Rest the gun for the baby head. Blow up the baby head. Then, shoot up the baby body some more times. Make the mother watch. Then turn the gun upon the mother. Put it up for her head. And then tell the mother say, you have to stay away from people, man. Where does a plea deal come in all of this? I think this is a case where there should be no plea deals. I think this is a case where Jamaica could have... Had, Jamaica's justice system now misses the chance again to set the bar high, to set another example, to say... This is unacceptable. On a gun cut plea deal. There wasn't no need to cut a plea deal in this. They were pleading guilty from beginning. Y'all cutting a plea deal. What kind of plea deal is this? Just like in the Beachy Stout case. Them get a man 19 years, but he only gets to serve 10. After a gruesome description of how they did Tanya. Hmm. Yvonne Wallace says recruiting is her line of business. She allegedly recruited internationally. Uh, Yvonne, stop. Because that's not how they recruit. But anyhow, Bradshaw, who lives in the United States and does share a child with Paul Well, member of Parliament of Kingston East and Port Royal, 
was charged on October 13th with two counts of conspiracy to kidnap, two counts of conspiracy to murder, two counts of kidnapping, and two counts of capital murder. Her co-accused 30-year-old graphic designer Roland Balfour, I have a picture of Roland Balfour too, was charged with, let me see if I can pull up the picture. Bang, 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 going on this. Let's see, downloads. Ah. Uh, Let's see if I could pull up his pictures for you real quick. Um, see him there. Boom. See me here. Let's see, make it bigger. Oh, that's, uh... This is one of them. May I keep it way out here, sir? Because I'm not too sure. I um, want somebody. Uh, actually, I am sure. But um, I don't like when people call me and say, take out the picture out of the bit. Then I have to go find which part it there and take it back out. So I flash it real quick on the screen. But I have the pictures. Uh, Shakira is actually working on putting everybody who is involved in this pictures together. So she'll have these pictures when she does her video. See? So when I can't see a who, them. But her co-accused, 30-year-old graphic designer Roland Balfour was charged with conspiracy to murder, conspiracy to kidnapping, and misprison of felony while Roshane Miller, 29-year-old air conditioning technician, was slapped with charges of conspiracy to murder, kidnapping, murder, and misprison of felon. Misprison of felon means you know that a felony took place, you didn't report it, act like you never care about it, you might as well have participated in it. And Richard Brown, another one, otherwise called Richie, he was charged with conspiracy to murder, conspiracy to kidnapping, and kidnapping due to security concerns. If you notice, if you look at all of those charges, it will tell you basically who did what. If you notice, one man charges don't have no murder in it. It has conspiracy to murder and kidnapping and conspiracy to kidnapping, which would tell you then that he partook in the kidnapping and the planning of the kidnapping and the planning of the murder, but he did not execute the murder. Another one of them has murder as the 29-year-old AC Tech has murder on his conspiracy to murder along with the kidnapping, conspiracy to kidnapping, murder and misprison of felony and the other one now has the same kind of charges so it tells you who did what and who didn't partake in everything but did partake in most of it who is rolling over right now and telling everything when i really know yet as far as when the pictures go but due to security concerns the man who took advantage of a plea deal on thursday was not named and that's the reason why we cannot tell you which one of them roll over already? He was represented by attorney Valerie Nita Robertson, King's Counsel, and Rita Allen Brown. Two attorneys. Why look like attorneys give away in a Jamaica? Or is this a case of a family looking out for their own? Can you know your family over far and I say, Lord God. When your sister Soflo gets himself in a trouble, boy, we have to go get two good lawyers for defending me now. So make we put your money together and make we go hire Champagne and hire somebody else, right? So I don't know if that's the case or them just have their money put on like that. But all of them are professionals, though. They are skilled professionals that have a career. We just can't believe that so the money are just dash for them life, them freedom, and them career just so. To commit such a gruesome act. As a matter of fact, I'll even go as far as to say this. The way how that was described, that it was done, no first time killer don't move like that. The way how that was described, that it was done, no first time killer don't move like that. You don't look at no 10 month old baby and shot them in them head in front of them mother and force her to watch. And then shoot the baby more. No first time killer move like that. So I'm willing to bet. That more. In the background. Somewhere. For 
especially the one that pulled the trigger. And don't forget the details. They said he was laughing when he did it. That's on the first time. He was laughing when he did it. All when the woman I cry and I beg. I don't know if y'all ever seen what gunshot does to skin and bone and flesh. Me get lick already, you know. Uh, my foot open up like. So, me can imagine a baby and the head. And you laughed. Wow. On October 14th, Jamaica Observer reported that Deputy Commissioner of Police in Charge of Crime Fitz Bailey has disclosed a news conference the previous day that the mother and the baby girl were brutally murdered and that their bodies were disposed of. He described the case as one of the most painful investigations for the team in recent times. Shout out to these Jamaican police officers because if you go up on the scene and go see them something here in a real life with your own eyes and then investigate and digest the details of all this. After a while, this takes a toll on your mental state. So for the good squad of them out there that are encountering these, remember I know over a thousand or something people are getting murdered. Somebody has to go to the scene and, and assess the situation and take a report and look close for what going. That means they have head mash out and this, that. You have to see that personally up close. In it. It takes a toll on your mental space after a while. Trust me. So, boy, we don't know if it's about send prayers out to them because we need somebody who's strong enough to do those. And everybody can do them kind of work there. But they are so essential to solving a case, to find, to bringing justice to victims. So the Observer reported that when Bradshaw appeared in court at a mention hearing on October 13th, prosecutors said that the fact that the 27-year-old Patterson had blocked Bradshaw from her social media account did not stop her from traveling here to Jamaica and conspiring with her cousin and co-accused Roland Balfour to contract men to kidnap and murder the mother and the daughter. The woman blocked you already. And that wasn't enough to stop you. Remember she got blocked on a Monday. And by Tuesday she was in Jamaica or something like that. She, she was in Jamaica 24 hours after being blocked. Less than. It's like when the girl blocked her. She must have said oh. Um, jet blue. Ticket. With my credit card there. Jamaica by morning, 7 a.m. landing, purchase, out of there. Crazy. She learned of the existence of young Paul Well, the 10-month-old baby, on Wednesday the 5th, September 2023. Having learned of the existence of this child, she contacted the woman on Facebook, right, and informed her that I am Mr. Paul Well's wife. And I've learned that you have a baby for my husband. And we're going to do a DNA to make sure that that baby is actually my husband's baby. Miss Bradshaw advised Miss Patterson about the DNA, that it should be done to determine the paternity of the child. And after a brief exchange of words, we can imagine she was probably saying, what are you calling me with all this for? Cause me not think any woman are gonna be like, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. I'm a sorry, me breathe for your husband, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. She probably said, my girl, I'm not married to you. You're a long time girlfriend. Me a baby mother like you. Where you call me about DNA for the man already said the baby a theme. Angered her. Block. Oh. I'm trying to reach this bitch and she not answering. You know what? I go to Jamaica. Spirit Airline. Ticket to Jamaica. Tomorrow morning. Landing 7 a.m. She started as soon as she landed. That means that she didn't plan that. The whole time from she get blocked, she just got crazy. 
according to how this goes. Miss Bradshaw advised Miss Pattison about the DNA. They went, exchanged a few other words, and then the deceased blocked her on the phone, on, on the account that very day. The accused, who is domiciled overseas, means she lives in the U.S., she traveled to Jamaica the very next day. She got blocked on the 5th. She traveled to Jamaica on the 6th. The allegations are that she traveled to Jamaica for the sole purpose of killing Tashina Patterson and the young child that she shared with her spouse. Her spouse. The Crown's allegation are that the accused, through her cousin and co-accused, Roland Balford, they contracted some men to kidnap and murder Patterson and Saraya, the prosecutor said. Now, here's where this gets twisty. Pay attention to words. They are saying that they got together and conspired to hire some men. In other words, then, they're going to court to say, we know say it did bad, but it's not we pull the trigger. We, we hire some man and them kill the youth them. We don't remember what them name and we don't really know what them look like still. That way them not have to tell upon nobody. Don't remember them name, don't know what them look like but we hired them to do it and them do it. So although you're going to charge me we're trying to wipe that off the table that I wasn't the one who pulled the trigger so you shouldn't charge me for the murder. In my opinion, my humble opinion, we don't even need nobody else right now. The whole of them, all three of them, should get charged for murder, period. As if each one of them pulled the trigger. According to Bradshaw, According to prosecutors, Bradshaw met with men to arrange the kidnapping and the murders. The original plan was to kidnap Patterson and the baby from their home. Bradshaw paid the men the equivalent of 10 of 100,000 Jamaican dollars, which I explained to you guys before was about 600 and something US dollars. 600 and something US dollars. That was supposed to be the down payment for the execution. The remainder of the funds was another 400,000 Jamaican dollars because it was supposed to be 500,000 Jamaican dollars or half a million Jamaican dollars. She only paid 640 US dollars or so, which is 100,000 Jamaican dollars. And then from that, it's probably not even that much. You can just Google it. Say, Google, how much is... Five is 100,000 Jamaican dollars in US dollars. Your phone is going to talk to you and say, that's 600 and something one dollar. You're going to get the exact amount. But it's around that ball field. Now, nobody got that money. In preparation to execute their contract, the men, the court was told, went to the Gilmore Drive address in St. Andrew where Patterson lived during the night of Wednesday, September 6th, before them even go back far the next day. They went there the same night. Remember, I know, she landed on the 6th. She got, she got blocked on the 5th. She landed in Jamaica on the 6th. And by the night of the 6th, they were already driving around her house. Already a plant. Yep, that's at the house. See, probably see her too. See her there. See the baby there. No, see them just gone inside. All right, all right. You know, I have some questions. Um, if she just find out about this baby on the 5th, and she reach a Jamaica the 6th, how she find her address so quick? How she found her address so quick? Something is missing. It says in preparation for the execution, the men who were contracted were already on the 6th, on the night of the 6th, went to scope out the area. They were around her house. They also went to the home where Bradshaw was staying in Stony Hill, St. Andrew, 
A further meeting was held there on Thursday, September 7th to discuss exactly how they were going to execute this plan. This is what the court heard. Prosecutor said that on Sunday, September 9th, Bradshaw placed several phone calls and had conversations with Patterson with a view to lure her away from her premises. She afterwards arrived at Patterson's home at approximately 7 p.m., I mean 7 a.m. in the morning, that fateful day. So from the 6th when she land to the 9th, the 7th, the 6th when she land, the 6th, the night, they're scoping out the girl home. The 7th, they met to plan how them are going to do it, them see where she live, them see the baby, everything, how we are going to get her out of the baby the house. The 8th, the 9th, she has contact with her on phone, trying to lure her away. She afterwards arrived at Patterson's home at 7 a.m. on the 9th. So 6, 7, 8, and by the 9th, got her. Flying to the country, scope out the area, meet with everybody involved, plan it properly, get her on the phone. See how we are going to lure her away? Got her. Properly friggin' executed like a true military person, though. I remember me telling her she's not no combat arms, infantry, nothing. But when, I, I'll be honest with you, when U.S. military individuals deal with the execution of a plan, this is exactly how we are drilled to do. And it is executed precisely. Look, just look at her timing. I just pull it up for you. The six Shalan. Scope out the place. Seventh, meeting. Everybody involved. How are we going to do this? Boom. Eight. On it. Executing. Trying to get her lower in. Ninth, done. trying to tell you evidentiary material shows that Patterson exited her premises and entered a SUV now what you think that evidentiary material is who are going to see you exit your premises and go into your car and all that camera evidentiary material showed that Patterson exited her premises and entered a SUV that was parked at her gate and she had her baby with her. Evidentiary material shows that she remained in that SUV at the gate for 15 minutes before it moved. Now again, I have a question. What's going on here? What's going on here and who was in that vehicle? Because at this point, 15 minutes at my gate, I'm inside of your vehicle. Is, is, is this where they were like, remember I know somebody called and explained to it, so it could very well be like, yeah, Philip, um, Philip, I'm supposed to come pick you up, and you must bring your, your daughter with him, with you. Yeah, so we'll be there, 7 a.m., ready here, me the driver, all right, see you then. And she get dressed nice and dressed up, you're going to see daddy later. You know, dress her up nice and be her dung and thing, get herself nice. One day, if I'm going to want some later from me too, and jump into the vehicle. And then was like, Cause why you park up at the gate for 15 minutes? Whose SUV it was? Live through Erica TV. We've been told. That the SUV belongs to Philip Paul. Well, we don't know that to be factual yet. Yet. The vehicle then drove off and left the area approximately 722. Remember, I know. 7, 722. Patterson and Soraya never exited that vehicle prior to leaving. So the vehicle left with them in the vehicle. This is what the prosecutor said to the presiding judge. The Crown's case is that Bradshaw took Patterson to Stony Hill in the vicinity of the home where she, 
Bradshaw was staying. At this location, the accused handed over Patterson and the young girl to Richard Brown and other persons who are yet to be apprehended, who are yet to be apprehended. After this, Patterson and her young child were taken to Warka Hill where they were shot and killed and their bodies were burnt. All the other persons who they are claiming are involved but yet to be apprehended, there should be no deal struck. Now, this might be the reason why they struck a deal because all of them who they have in custody are probably saying we were a part of the planning and we were a part of the kidnapping. We lured her away, but we delivered them to them killer them who actually did the killing. Where are they? Who are they? If they're not able to give like a full story and involve everybody who's involved and make all the dots connect, there should be no damn um no deals being cut for people for got a short time of prison for this. This is a case where you could easily bring out the death penalty, man, and hang them to rot it. But hey, Bradshaw has been remanded until a further hearing scheduled for December 1st. So her next time back in court in Jamaica will be December 1st. She is represented by attorney Deborah Martin and Kelly Hamilton. And we'll see how it goes in court. Now, of course, her attorneys are going to get in there and try to stir stuff up. And their goal is to get their client off. And if you can't get the client off, you at least as a good attorney will try to get your client the least time possible. So let's see how they will be able to minimize her involvement in this or to count it out to stress and malfunctioning of the brain and whatever else they want to put on the table. We'll see how this goes from then. So December 1st, I can tell you what, her court date is probably going to be delayed because from December hit, Jamaica can deal with no court, not, 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 not Christmas time. December 1st is Christmas for we. Christmas season start. And it's festive all the way down till after Christmas and into Grand Market night, New Year's. Back in the next year, about the first week of January of the new year, 2024, is where you can look for something to happen. Me not think nothing more will happen in this case until then. However, I stand on what I said. If they are not giving you everybody that's involved and making the story connect every dot then they're lying. And if they're lying, then they don't deserve no kind of deal. Matter of fact, I just don't think any deal should be given in this case. That must say. <laughs> Vicky said, them better don't come with that shit. That's exactly what they're coming with. Hold them in prison until New Year's, no bail. I agree, Kat. I agree. Life to Erica TV says they need information from them. That's why they need to deal. I get it, Erica. But are they going to give them? Because usually you give up. Like when the deal is struck, you give up something. So they then know who else is involved. Me not hear them talk about anybody else involved. They just said some people who are yet to be brought in as yet, which means there are more people involved. So it take about three, four, five people for kill, kidnap and kill an innocent 27-year-old woman and a 10-month-old baby. Jesus Christ. You know what? We're going to stay with this one close for sure because I want to see the outcome of this one. But I truly believe that we are dropping the ball in proving to the world that we now going to stand for this. Everybody get light sentence. Everybody get bail in Jamaica. Everybody get a chance to cop out and play out. The only person Mr. don't get that was Vibes Cartel. That's why I know say, I set them, set him up and them don't like him. Because him too would have gotten, what, 19 years in prison, 10 out on parole, something like that. It is what it is. We're going to leave that right here. Hear what? It's Friday. You're up. You're healthy. You're strong. Give thanks. Have a wonderful weekend. Go out and get some sunshine for those of you who haven't started getting snow 
yet and haven't started getting cold weather yet, try to enjoy life. Put a smile upon your face, uplift your vibration, and be good. Nothing wrong with being good and it don't cost nothing, right? Remember, karma. Think about everything you're going to do and remember karma. Karma never misses an address. So all when you run, go to God and Jesus and all that, karma is still coming, all right? I'll catch you all on the next video right here on SoFlo TV. God go with Dono. Walk good. I'm out. Peace. Later, Vicky. Later, everyone. Later, British Jamaican girl. Later, Kai Tai Jai. Later, Lulu Ridges. Later, Mrs. Nia.